and uh, one of our colleagues, a member of the MBIU, uh, bus driver. And look, I suppose our members are coming to us and saying to us, look, OK, this is not industrial action, but this is about health and safety. And as far as all members are concerned, both the company, which is Bus Air in this case, and indeed the government, have a duty of care to both themselves and the people that they carry uh, from A to B. For all the latest news updates, you can go to our website. That's Newstalk.com. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. You can find our lowest car insurance price online, guaranteed. Staying mainly dry for the rest of today with a mix of clouds and sunny spells. There's just a small chance of some isolated showers. Top temperature is 14 to 19 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. All right, you're very welcome back to Saturday's Off the Ball. Nathan with you till five o'clock. Joined in studio as always at this time on a Saturday by Dan McDonald and Johnny Ward. How are we? How are you getting on? Nathan? How are we, Johnny? You okay? You okay? All right, Johnny. Because we were putting together, you know, our talking points of the week that we would go through today. Actually, some planning, like one email, yeah. does go into this <laughs> show, <laughs> which Just, isn't responded to, <laughs> which is generally not responded not to. to not but read. Johnny said. Let's do, don't forget to talk about the giant killing Galway United's win. Was that sent when 1 0 up against Shamrock Rovers last night? I hope I didn't say giant killing Galway United's win because the grammar wouldn't have been great. But They uh, said it before the game as well. Yeah. I noticed that Johnny's social media activity was, was quiet last night. Uh, was well, 1 0 one, one up at half time. Um, no, he was like, very subdued because, funnily enough, I was, uh, I was at the under 21s. And as was I. Every so often I was thinking, oh, let's check the score. And I'd go, I couldn't find it online. Mm. And then I go, check Johnny's account, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I mean... He sent me a picture of a can around quarter to seven. So I was like, <laughs> it was kind of... Can? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was alcohol, John. You illegally brought alcohol into the ground? No, I didn't actually. What? No, no. Were, you, were you on the train or something? You definitely that was said. a lot earlier than that. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I was. I, was I, I just thought that there was a blackout of some description had taken uh, place. No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's good fun to get the train down for a game on a Friday night. You actually leave Dublin at half four, you get there comfortably for kickoff. You left Friday night racing studio here. You're, mm, you're, you're in a row. All the jersey. Oh. Yeah. And then when you got into kind of the city centre, all you could hear was Rovers fans uh, chanting. And we haven't had that in Galway for a long time where there are actually away fans at the game. But as for the game, I wasn't disappointed because um, if, we'd, if we'd conceded an equaliser in the last minute, I would have been absolutely gutted. Um, the prospect of going to Tala, if we got hockeyed in Tala, would that be any good for Galway United's players who are... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Were you not on this show a couple of weeks ago? Giving out about a lack of replays. Oh, no, yes. I want, I want replays. But last night I was thinking. There's if, nothing if not inconsistent. No, I, 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 else was I, 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 I think the, uh, I think you planted this week. I think the FAI Cup is, uh, should be bigger than um, just like rushing through the competition, and especially this weekend where games have been refixed because of a stupid competition in Scotland and so on. So I think the FAI Cup should be given. Um, the sort of promotion that ladies football is given by Lidl, I think it should be really promoted. It's a great competition, and Rovers fans brought six or seven hundred down to Galway last night. Um, but Alan Murphy, um, for a young manager who you know, I've had question marks about the, the way he set up. Rovers barely had a shot on goal in the first half, and the, they had everyone playing except Jack Byrne. Their budget is probably a million times what Galway United is realistically. Oh, you're, you're a manager now, John. Galway United have no money realistically this season and Shamrock Rovers are paying good money to players um, that have played for Ireland and so on and um, they had very few chances and this Galway team should be very, very proud. It was, if anyone coming out of the game would be positive about next season. Um, it, was, it was a good night apart from the result. Who, who were you talking to this week? Sorry, what, were you, what were you referring to there? What, what have you been up to this week? I've had a quiet week. You've had a very quiet week. Social media has been calm about things. It's all been... Measured. Perfectly fu- measured as the way social, me- social media usually is. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. used all my words up on Wednesday night. Wednesday night? Yeah, we had. Um, it was a game, it was a game on Thursday. It was another event. Game on, on Thursday. The game on Thursday was uh, not to the forefront of my mind, I won't lie, for the majority of this mm. week. Though we did have a very good moment when Dave McGoldrick got that goal. Yeah. But uh, yeah. It's absurd. We've all had an interesting week then. Everyone is so wrapped up with what like Roy Keane and Gary Neville and so on did um, in a roadshow event on Wednesday night. I, I just don't see what relevance Roy Keane really has anymore. Like, what does he have to offer, honestly? Well, what he brought on Wednesday night, which is, which is very what? strong views. Uh, about Alex Ferguson, that like, who cares anymore? Like, well, uh, Roy Keane, everybody. Roy Keane, he, why do people care? Roy Keane was our assistant manager. What did he bring to the Ireland role? We played the worst football ever. Like, what did he bring anything tactically? Uh, Johnny, did he bring anything Johnny, to there's the two, there's two, there's two. Uh, listen, I see what you're saying and I can totally see where you're coming from. Why do we care? Uh, what, what, well, you see, you can't control, you can't contr- control what people care about. You know, like I, I, there's, there's, there's a line between, there's, there's a sort of a difference between, I don't respect Roy Keane's opinion, and why does anyone care? 
people will care about Roy Keane's opinion, rightly or wrongly, because he's probably Ireland's greatest ever footballer. But like, he's, no, a no, great, John, John, he's a great footballer. He's not a footballer John, anymore. You're, he's not a footballer John, anymore. Finish my he's, point. he's been a poor manager John. since the Sunderland job. What's, his, what's the relevance of what he's saying? Can't why is he carrying weight? This subject? Listen, why, like, <laughs> why John, is he carrying John, weight? Like? I, I'm just. What is it? I mean, people can listen to his words and judge what they want. The fact is, over 2,000 people went to an event on Wednesday to watch him speak. If Sold on, out within an hour. If it was on tomorrow, Gary Neville. if it was on tomorrow, you know, I'm sure 20,000 people would apply. Uh, plenty of people have dissected Roy Keane's comments. I have. I've written a piece about it. I, I know how I feel about it. I know how I feel about Roy Keane You wrote now. a very good piece about I, it. I know how I feel about it now, mm. but I, I, I don't think you can say, why do people care? People will, shouldn't people, care as much. People will always care. Well, that's a different thing. Yeah. But pe people will always care what Roy, Ke what Roy Keane has to say. Um, and th I think in a strange way, uh, you know, Roy Keane doesn't speak that much. I think the more that Roy Keane speaks, I the think maybe, maybe, maybe the less the people will pay attention to a yeah. degree. But like he, he, he has the star power, the box office pulling power. You can't, you can't dispute that. You can't say people should just ignore Roy Keane. No, it's not. I, I think Roy Keane is essentially in a fairly dark place in life. I think since he's left football, well, he certainly says he's not. He was asked that yeah, on I, Wednesday I, night, and he says actually has a very full life. Okay, he'd like bored. to get back into management. Said he's certainly not bored, out and about meeting people, yeah. keeping himself busy, has a large family. I think he's he's pining for relevance, and I think he's playing to the audience at this stage in terms of his outbursts. And um, but you can't I, say he's pining for relevance when Wednesday night was the first time in fifteen months he's spoken really mm. publicly. He, he hadn't it was spoken a charity about event. the WhatsApp. He hadn't spoken about leaving Ireland, so it's not like within two weeks of leaving the Irish job, he was suddenly here, there, and everywhere. Why bring up this stuff then about like Walters? Why bring up all scores about Because Ferguson, he hasn't like? spoken about it. Because That's obviously he has. That's a different debate, obviously John. Had, that is a different debate. Obviously he'd been you know. sitting on this. It had been swirling around inside and he was waiting for his moment for it all to come out. Mm. But that's Roy Keane. Yeah. That's one of the reasons 2,000 people went. Mm. Because they all knew they were going to get something. Mm. Our football coverage brought to you with thanks to Paddy Power. For more information on responsible gambling, visit dunlouis.net. Gary Breen is on the line. Gary... Why do people care about Roy Keane? Well, listen, he is compelling. I think you heard Gary Neville even say that as an ex-teammate of him. He said he's a compelling character. You, Nathan, in, um, said the obsession with Roy, and it continues. It's just, I agree with Dan there. As, as soon as you put Roy in a headline show like that, lots of people will come and want to listen to what he's got to say. But I agree with Johnny. I understand there's an, another argument where people are saying, what's the relevance in terms of, we're hearing the same stories, really, aren't we? You, you, you saying there that we're getting an insight into what happened with Walters and stuff, but we've heard these stories about Ferguson before. We've heard all those other stories and Saipan. Christ, I was there. So, I, <laughs> I, although having said that, sometimes when I read the lads' books, I'm not sure I actually was there. In terms of <laughs> the well, license Gary, people talk about. Let's name some names. Ah, <laughs> uh, listen, they've all got books out, and they most of the lads at this stage. Yeah. Well, and we know who was the first person to read most of those books, I think, and uh, <laughs> get a good assessment. And probably quite like you, Gary, was reading them going, this isn't my memory mm -hmm. of exactly what happened. Um, John Walters obviously did come up on Wednesday night. Um, I think out of fairness, we're probably as well to play both sides of the story. Um, I'm sure most people have heard it at this stage. But here was Roy Keane and what he had to say about John Walters at a road show on Wednesday night. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, we don't have that. Right, ready just yet. But listen, everybody I'm sure has heard exactly what he had to say. It's been in all the media. Um, here is what John Walters had to say today. He was on Football Focus. Honestly, I don't know why people listen to, to what he has to say sometimes. Um, in, terms of, in terms of the route you're talking about, what went down, I didn't particularly want to go on TV and, and say that. It all came from a couple of years ago when I did an interview with Henry Winter and I broke down. He caught me by surprise and I broke down. It's, it's something that I've never done in my career. Mentally, as a player, very tough. But he just got me to another place. And on the back of that, there were so many responses that came in. And, and then I had a terrible year last year. And I got asked to, to speak about it. Someone got wind of it. I got asked to speak about it. And because of the responses I had previously, uh, I went down that route. And, you know, if someone wants to take it down that route, that's fine. That's up to them. But, uh, but, it doesn't bother me one single bit what what, what he has to say. Uh, obviously, I bother him a little bit. He doesn't bother me one single bit, and that's what I said. I don't, I don't know why people take any notice most of the time. So that was Jonathan Walters on Football Focus on the BBC, very much in keeping there with what we'd been hearing from John Walters over the last couple of days. I know people were quite upset. 
about some of the things that Roy Keane said, but it certainly seems as though it was water off a duck's back when it came mm. to John Walters. Like I, I, I've no doubt Roy Keane like is a good family man. Um, he keeps in touch with people um, down in, at home in Cork, and I think. I'm not sure he really believes what he said about Walters. I wasn't there the other night. I'd say he was quite wound up at that stage and maybe it was something that just came in the heat of the moment. Um, but we, we, I don't know why we, we need to dwell on something like this. If Roy Keane has something to offer, why Ireland played so terribly badly during his tenure, I'd like to listen to that. Mm. Well, it doesn't, he doesn't see it that way. I mean, like this You should have got Nathan to ask him that then, Johnny. Oh. Oh. I wasn't there. I was presenting because nobody no, else was No, not you. Left. I'm saying Nathan <laughs> should have asked. It's easy when you're sitting here, Johnny, isn't it? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, after the fact. having said that, if I were doing your or Joe's job the other night, um, would I have quivered in Roy Keane's shoes? Quite probably. Mm. Yeah. I, Listen, he did speak about the Ireland job. He felt that they were very harshly he, treated. He does have that me- opinion. Yeah. yeah, he does. And he did bring up, funnily enough now, bringing up the, we don't have the players. Yeah, that's his line, you know, lack of quality. And it is true, he, he doesn't necessarily address how you address that. And um, I mean, that, I think that would obviously would be one of the criticisms of Roy Keane as a, as a manager or as a pundit, even to a degree that, I mean, this incredible footballer, like for me, Roy Keane is Ireland's greatest ever player. It's not, it's not a debate almost for me, you know, in terms of like how, uh, what he achieved and how he drove a team to sort of Premier League titles. So there's, there's no dispute in the greatness of Roy Keane as a player, but, mm. but, but there's, that's... You know, there's almost a certain sadness in his inability to to cope with maybe life after playing to a degree. In terms of, as you say, not not speculating in any way, Anthony else. I'm just talking about in terms of his relationship with football. Well, like I he wraps actually, up someone. Sorry, Nathan. He, he wraps up with the attack on on John Walters and some of the comments that like his inability to distill the person from their medal count, you know, and that someone's character is wrapped up in some way with their football ability. Like that's. But that's a flaw, you know, and, mm. and there was an element of playing to the crowd, there was an element of people there just laughing at everything. He could have said mm. anything, you know, he could, have, he could have endorsed some of the worst things in the world, and I still think some people would have laughed, you know, so uh, there is that sort of keen aura that's there. Mm. But actually, it is a problem that he, he can't almost relate to, to people because, well, he won X amount of medals at X amount of time, and show me your medal collection as though that is, that is a reflection of you as a man. I mean, like that's that's it's a pretty weird character flaw, and I think you know we all of a certain age, you know, we remember a time when Keane was at, at his pomp as a player, and we hung on his every word like it was gospel. Mm-hmm. Everything Roy said, Roy is right about everything. I remember, I actually heard Dion, Dion Fanning speak with this the other day, and like you know spoke very well on this topic. And I remember back in the day, there would have been a sense of well. You know, Roy was right about everything. You know, like Roy, when Roy said something that was right, he wanted standards for players. Yes, he's right. You know, he we should do more. We should we should train more. We should be more mm. driven. Yeah, he's right. Everything he says is correct. But as time has passed, you suddenly realise that that sort of uh, that that cloak of invincibility has faded. It's flawed. I mean, in, in the context of the other night, he's talking about. I know it was tongue in cheek, and he was sort of laughing about it. But uh, you know, rightly so, that he was paid this big salary as mm. Ireland assistant manager, just to rem- remind us that he was being paid maybe 400, 500 grand a year for being assistant manager of a team at a time when the FBI, as we know, was fairly broke. You know, he was offered but that money. He, he, he was not, offered not, that not money. his problem. And I think he almost not, implied that. No, of- yeah, well, I know. Okay. There was an element of that, but I don't know how I was getting this, but hey. But the, you know exactly. But like there was the crusader for the rights, mm. writing the wrongs of Irish football as he was at one point, and now he, he wasn't particularly energised about that subject matter the other day. You know, so uh, I think just the we were all wrong about Roy Keane. I think. I think there was obviously a lot in the night, considering it was pretty much three hours long, and the comments on John Walters and the comments around Alex Ferguson probably ended up overshadowing pretty much everything. One of the more interesting comments he made and almost one of the sadder comments was about management and when he brought up, you know, he'd like the opportunity to just even sit in front of somebody Mm. and put forward his case. And again, maybe it is, you look and think, well, should you be aware that there's a reason you aren't getting those opportunities that you would think a lot of chairmen should, and I think there's a feeling that people feel he'll eventually get a gig somewhere, that actually, Gary, like there is a sadness there for Roy Keane that you know, he wants a big job, he wants that opportunity, but right now it's kind of hard to see where it's going to come from. Well, ultimately, when any ex-player or anyone who's looking for a job goes on and is a pundit or doing any commentary, you're effectively being interviewed then. That's when chairmen are looking at you. And you're seeing it so much, You like Lee, um, Liam Rosinha, um Son, is it, oh, is it Liam Rosina, the fullback, yeah, gets yeah, a job son, because yeah. he's so articulate on Sky? 
He gets headhunted by, by by Derby. We're seeing similar things with because Gary Neville's such a brilliant pundit. We think he's like a, a great um, tactical genius. He's getting his jobs on the back of that as well. And, and essentially, whenever you speak in public, chairmen or decision makers at clubs are looking at you. And that is where you are being interviewed then. The next stage is then getting in front of them. But they are taking notes to whatever people are saying. So do you think that's actually something that's changed over the last 10, 15 years? Oh, without years? a doubt, yeah. You'll hear it all the time in terms of, certainly down in the lower leagues, someone that will, um, a chairman will say, well, listen, I heard him in an interview. He spoke so well. He was articulate. He was knowledgeable. And that's why I wanted to meet him. And that sets the pathway up that way. But it was brilliant in terms of the whole show with Roy and I'm going away from the Jonathan Waters so for to give people who are desperate to get an insight into what he's like even for Gary Neville to have said to you the scenarios like where he came off at that game against Coventry and he knew it was waiting for him that the argument would keep coming and if so many of what things of what he said Gary Neville rang true to me in terms of playing for Ireland with Roy notably that scenario I think we were playing a game one time and even coming off the pitch at half time you could see me and him arguing about something or other about I passed back at half time with tuning up or should have passed forward and it keeps going on but ultimately the biggest thing that I noticed in terms of Gary Neville talking about that meeting in front of Ferguson and the Man United players where you got strong characters around why didn't someone jump up to stop it exactly the same scenario in terms of Saipan because that situation just escalated so quickly I think that's that's why he is compelling and like um I think if you were a player that played with Roy Keane, I think he um, he could make you feel very small. But I would say he would really drive you towards perfection because you knew that he 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 set those standards himself. The problem is Johnny. Um, can I just interrupt so, you there? Like in, in terms of driving people on and stuff like that, a brilliant captain. Gary Neville said it wasn't about speech. You didn't get any of that. Mm. You just got him by leading by example. Led by example. Calm, yeah, calm, authoritative, but also. This is what frustrates me about those United players, that they can flippantly say it was hard work, it was desire. It wasn't none of that, because I've seen many players who could match Roy Keane's desire, work rate, Lee Carsley, David Connolly. But he was technically, technically gifted player. And that sometimes gets overlooked that it was just his will, his determination to become the player he was. And what a player. That's a great point, Gary. Amazing player. He wasn't like, you know, when you talk about the, the teams of the Premier League and he often doesn't get in them because he didn't get amazing goals very often. He didn't mm. do that. Roy Keane was the best footballer I ever saw play for Ireland because he could basically dictate and run a game. Um, he, he didn't give the ball away. He passed the ball. Um, the problem is he's not a footballer anymore. As a manager, if I were to, you know, if I were a club chairman, the only reason I would take Roy Keane on is for the box office nature of it. Because um, if you have a Brian Clough, Peter Taylor situation where you have they need to work in tandem, you might have a very good coach along with a very good man manager. I don't think Roy Keane, Roy Keane is not a very good coach. Um, from speaking to players who played for him, he doesn't really offer a great deal tactically. When he was with Martin O'Neill at Ireland, I don't know what he offered there. And is he a man manager? If you're a man manager, you treat, we'll say, Aaron Connolly differently to how you treat, say, you know, the, the left back or whatever, because they're different characters. Roy Keane, I don't think he has that in him anymore. I think he's basically still the, the bully and uh, I, I don't think he has it in him to be a manager anymore and I, I'd be amazed if he if he changed enough that he could become a successful manager in this era. Well, I think what he probably needs to do is just somehow get a job and prove that he is different, prove yeah. that he isn't that character you're talking about. Yeah, it's whether like he, or not he gets that. It's possible that like, some of the attributes that made him such a great player I mean, are some, and somehow attributes that mean he can't mm. work work as a manager to some degree and like his perfect role was probably as the driving force of a dressing room as a player who like he was he was the best at it you know as, as Gary like he was the best player and yeah he also had a hell of a character to go with it and like there was some great insight in the event the other night even in the midst of that essentially speaking about how Ferguson would use him as the, his own sort of bulldog yeah. when it suited them you know that like and i thought it was interesting never referring to how actually that there was harsher interviews than the MUTV one but it didn't matter when when Keane was a player and he could come out and say whatever he wanted and he, when they needed he lost that or and and to some degree like there, there there is layers to this story in the sense that Ferguson i can see probably why he was so loyal to Ferguson and then was discarded him because he reached his, his sell-by mm -hmm. date effectively, that I can see how that can be a scarring experience for someone. And like, there are these moments when, when, when Roy's there the other night where he, he, he sort of said something, I, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm amazed of contradictions, or I'm, you know, yeah. he, he, the, 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 he throws in these, these lines of self-awareness, but it, it, is, it is just sort of extraordinary the extent to which he still carries certain tortures. And, and when it comes to, like the, the theory from speaking to players and I've spoken to a lot of people who've worked under Roy and, it, and really it just seems that over a period of time uh, he can't work with people to, you know, to, to a degree as a manager with a player because he, he, can't, he can't control them in a way he might if as a player mm. where he's on the pitch with them and he can do certain things he just can't, he can't Well Gary Neville happen. said I think 
alluded to the last night and said in his book that Roy Keane made him feel, t- feel 10 feet tall when he walked out onto the pitch. But part of that was because he was out on the pitch with them and could drag them along. When you can't do that as a manager, I guess you can't go, there's not as much of an opportunity to sort of balance things out. Whereas there might be some negatives in the dressing, but out in the pitch, everything's fine and he can put up with it. Yeah. Whereas when, when he doesn't get that opportunity out in the pitch. Yeah. When are people going to realise that the remit of being a player and the manager are completely different? They're completely different. And I, 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 I totally agree with Neville there in terms of elevating teammates. He did that. And if he's doing that in a Manchester United dressing room, and there's no doubt, Johnny, you said he wouldn't get in the best teams. He would get in every player's greatest ever Premier League team and he'd be captain. Yeah, I, I agree. Mind, yeah, like it's just like some people would have like Lampard, Lampard ahead of Keane. It doesn't. Have, like, well, you have, oh, like, fan- have when you, Gerard. Yeah, when you have that Gerard like fantasy, Gerard. that fantasy football club or some of those shows, he actually doesn't feature as much as he, as he should. Yeah, like when, when guys are going through there. He wasn't a sexy heaven. player in the sense of these amazing Gerard S goals or that, mm. but like his performances. He wasn't English. Um, he wasn't English as well, and his performances for Ireland, particularly in a team that wasn't great. I mean, going to these, like going to Belgrade. I remember that time when he was just carried the team for the first half. His performance against Portugal, obviously. Against Holland, as we remember, um, like, and and an, an unbelievable kind of um, icon in the sense that he wasn't particularly tall, yet he could run a midfield against hard men like Vieira. Um, I, I just I just don't know where Roy Keane fits anymore in terms of football because I don't think he offers anything in terms of if you asked him to dissect a game tactically at half time, I'm not sure he'd be actually able. An hour gone at the Aviva. It's now Ireland 19, Wales 10. So Ireland moving through the gears in the second half. Johnny Murphy's watching. Uh, yeah, they've done really well second half. They've uh, they brought they've brought a tiny bit more accuracy to their kicking game. Uh, they've got got up in the air and the challenge in the air, and then they've turned down a couple of kickable uh, penalties to go to the corner, and they've played, uh, which has paid dividends in scoring two tries. Uh, they're again uh, their intent, especially defensively. They've got two fantastic turnovers that have led to penalties to get uh, to get territory into the into uh, the Welsh half uh, and then they're playing a bit more um, kind of late runners off nine with, with Murray moving a bit more around nine so yeah all in goal a very, a very good Rory Best is off now the bench has been emptied by Jack Carty who's warming up down below me but Rory Best got a standing ovation as you would, uh, as you would expect on his uh, final appearance in front of a home crowd What was that like for him actually because you know with the Obviously, the difficulty he's been under was it like one of these emotional Lanzo moments? Uh, I think it was just everyone together up showing a great servant for Ireland, uh, showing their appreciation for a great servant for Irish rugby. Um, I think you know there has been a few wobbles in the line out, but it, it actually hasn't been any throwing. It's probably been where they've been calling to and making the wrong calls. They were marked up any time they've lost the ball line eight they've been calling to the wrong area so um, but in general he, he put in a good shift around he had a turnover a couple of turnovers he put in a really good shift around the park I forgot my golden rule of Saturday afternoons we don't let the two Johnnies talk to each other during the rugby <laughs> Johnny's, Johnny's a class act <laughs> as, is, as is he actually <laughs> uh, Johnny just before we let you go Keith Earl to see with a yeah, heavily that, bandaged that, knee yeah I just had yeah that's probably the biggest worry and the biggest concern so far he was down they checked his knee and uh he he kind of he limped off. The stretcher was called, but he managed to to walk to the to, to the touchline. So that's probably the biggest worry from an Ireland perspective so far. All right, we'll be back to Johnny very shortly. Ireland leading Wales 19-10 in their final World Cup warm-up game. Five three one zero six is the text, and we're live on all our social channels as always. Uh, we do obviously want to talk about the match. Yeah, it's half an hour in, and we haven't discussed like the Ireland game or the twenty ones or even the the women winning during the week and a new manager. We've just spoken about it. You're, you're turning to me as if it's years. my fault. It is your fault. You, you, set the, the you set the agenda here. You're the one who. You set the agenda. No, no. I wasn't the one who said, "Well, let's talk more Roy Keane for half an with hour." The, I could have done a better job. Yeah. You know, that's, Roy Keane. That's, 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 that's absolutely what I got right absolutely there. Absolutely no, fine. That'll be remembered. Gary, Gary, Gary Breen is with us as well. Save your thoughts, Gary. We are going to talk Ireland Switzerland next. Off the ball on News Talk. Everyone here in Ireland, I'm sure, waiting with bated breath to see what exactly happens next and how it impacts us. We're leaving on the 31st of October, no ifs or buts. I've been following uh, politics, I've been writing about politics for 20 years now. I have never seen anything like what happened yesterday in the UK. I've never known anything like it. I've never known anything like it. I've known nothing like this. We thought we couldn't be in more unknown territory, um, but we are. It's dramatic. Order! 
Oh, it's entertaining. No, no, no to no deal. It's completely beyond parody. We should be under no illusion that what is in Ireland's best interest here is for Boris to go under a bus and the sooner the better. How likely is that scenario? Is is it possible, number one, and then likely number two? I don't want an election. The public... Stay ahead of the story with News Talk. I'll tell you exactly what is going to happen, Kieran. No, no, who, who am I kidding? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Productive afternoons with Harvey Norman. Need more you time? Ask about our range of large capacity washing machines with quick wash functions in Harvey Norman today. Now, where's the remote? Go, Harvey, go! The Aer Lingus September sale is now on. This year, put hibernation to bed and wake up to winter with great value flights. Fly to Europe from $29.99 one way, including taxes and charges. And swap early nights for winter sights. Don't snooze through the season. Wake up to winter. Smart books now in the September sale. Smart flies Aer Lingus. Book now at aerlingus.com. Offer subject to conditions and availability. Play it, wear it, live it. Whatever you're looking to buy, why not Flexify it? Choose a payment plan that suits you from a wide range of retailers across Ireland. Buy now and pay later with Flexify.com. Terms and conditions apply. See Flexify.com. Brown Thomas has the eye on rugby's biggest prize. Just shop with MasterCard in store or online before the 15th of September 2019 and enter the prize draw to win a trip of a lifetime to the final of Rugby World Cup 2019 Japan, courtesy of MasterCard. Terms and conditions apply. See brianthomas.com for details. Italian summers, long days together in the sun, living la bella vita. In Ireland, it's called the good life and it's three days in June and maybe a weekend in August. But even in Irish summers, you can taste La Bella Vita with Italy's favourite beer, Bira Moretti. Ah, delicioso. Great taste, never lost in translation. Bira Moretti, l'italiana autentica. That means authentically Italian. Always drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.ie. International football is more exciting than ever. Remember that first time on the terraces, where it all began. The heroes, the villains, the highs, the lows. All the while, you were learning. Now use that knowledge on Football Index. Join tens of thousands of fans trading the world's top players. Football Index, the game changed. App available, 18 plus, terms and conditions apply, gamble responsibly. Since 1927, ESB has been working towards a brighter future for all. Today, that means finding new ways to use clean electricity in our everyday lives. Like electric heat pumps, which are three times as efficient at heating because they convert energy from the air outside your home into useful heat within. Be part of a brighter future. Find out more at esb.ie. The 2019 Boyle Sports World Grand Prix Darts is back at the City West Convention Centre Dublin from the 6th to the 12th of October. See 32 of the biggest darting stars on the planet, including world number one Michael Van Gerwen, former Grand Prix champion Daryl Gurney, plus fan favourite Peter Wright. Get your tickets now at Ticketmaster.ie and search darts. The 2019 Boyle Sports World Grand Prix Darts at City West. Game on! This Irish success story is brought to you by Guaranteed Irish. Did you know that Black Knight is the leading Irish-owned web hosting company with 84,000 customers in 130 countries? Based in Carlo, Black Knight employs 48 people, providing domain names, email and web hosting using the latest technology and responsive customer support. Guaranteed Irish welcomes companies that are altogether better choices for our communities. So look out for it. GuaranteedIrish.ie. Altogether better. Switch and save at Carphone Warehouse. Save up to €189 on exclusive deals with three you won't find anywhere else. Get the Samsung Galaxy S10e or the Huawei P30 with a smartwatch GT for free. Yes, free. Both are available on a €45 a month plan with three. With all-you-can-eat data, but only when you switch at Carphone Warehouse. Or upgrade to next-level power with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. Available to order now. T's and C's apply. Offer subject to availability in 24-month contract. This week at Dunn Stores, become a connoisseur of French cuisine at our French food and wine event. 
Try a Parisian-style breakfast with any four for three euro on freshly baked pastries. Or host an evening feast with award-winning breads and three for two on delicious cheeses. And for those perfect French pairings, get 25% back in Value Club points when you buy any six bottles of wine. Plus, with our 10 or 50 grocery voucher, save even more. Dunn Stores, always better value. See online for terms and conditions, minimum spend required. Please drink responsibly. Off the ball. This is News Talk. Welcome back to Saturday's Off the Ball. Nathan, Dan and Johnny in studio. Gary Breen on the line. Ireland leading Wales 19-10 with 10 minutes remaining in the rugby. <sighs> Sorry about that. We've just had a text in. Can you please say rugby score spoiler alert before you give out the score of the match? <laughs> Some people have it taped and I'm looking forward to going home and watching it. Thank you very much. Is taping still a thing? Taped. <laughs> Taped. Are they going back to 1987 later on? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember uh, many years ago working in radio and getting a... Now, it's slightly different because it was 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning getting a very foul-mouthed text in from a listener who wasn't happy that I'd given out the Formula One result from the Australian Grand Prix, which had happened at 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, because it wasn't, being, it wasn't being shown. Neil still gets it because it's, it's repeated then at lunchtime. I, I can understand that anger, to be fair. Really? I, to, to, yeah, I think I can, yeah. That, that, that's fair. Sporting, sporting events that have happened through the night. That there was so do you think during the Rugby World Cup we should have some sort of a blanket embargo until lunchtime? And I, think, I think people's habits have changed now. Okay. But I think there, there, was a time, there was a time where that would have been extremely annoying. I had a cousin home from the States last weekend and he was like, I, I really want to watch the race on Saturday. And I was like... We're like, I didn't never knew he was into racing at all. Actually, like, what is it in Belmont? He goes, no, 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 the Formula One. And I, he was like, where can I watch in Dublin? I couldn't think of a single bar. <laughs> I've never seen Formula One being watching a bar in Dublin. We came up with, I think, the Wool Shed, something uh, like that. Yeah, we, well, you can probably now get involved in some kind of sponsorship deal with someone now off the back of this. There probably is somewhere that. Does anyone Formula watch one Formula One in Ireland? Oh, people still do. I do, think. yeah. There's a hard since the uh, Eddie Irvine, um, you know, days, and obviously. Um, the main backer from Ireland as well, uh, Eddie Jordan. Uh, like, do we have any interest anymore? I don't know. So I'd say a lot of people do. I mean, come on, Johnny. We're like we're hardcore League of Ireland fans. People saw, have the, saw the saw the grid interest. in uh, Baku actually. Uh, it was yeah. right. Neil Tracy's entire house, all his housemates watch it still. Oh really? There you go. Except Neil. Except Neil. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Formula One bed sheets. Each to their own. <laughs> each, to, each to their own. Uh, Gary, we haven't spoken to you since Thursday night. Do you watch Formula One, Gary? I don't know. I've no real interest in that, to be honest. All right, end of that conversation. <laughs> Gary, I'm asking the questions here, Johnny. The questions that people want to ask. This is what happened Wednesday Unlike you. This is a bit like Unlike that. you, all right? He was actually on Wednesday night talking to Brian O'Driscoll, and he was delighted with himself. Oh, yeah. Sc screen grabbing. Well, I screen thought O'Driscoll gave you a smackdown at one stage. He, he did, did, yeah. It doesn't matter. Right. It's all about the ratings. Screen grabbing, uh, uh -huh. screen grabbing uh, grabs of him top of the podcast chart. Somebody sent me that. Yeah, oh, did they? There's, yeah. there's a huge sense of irony here. You didn't, I had no idea what I was talking about, even more so. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Can you just be more specific? About I tell you, Bri Brian doesn't uh -huh. like being interrupted either. I did learn that. Like, this, is, <laughs> this guy isn't easy, you know. It's a learning, it's a learning experience for all <laughs> of both of us. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got to that. <laughs> Gary! So Ireland played Switzerland on Thursday night, it turned out. That drew one all. Your thoughts? Any great improvements since the Martin O'Neill Roy Keane era? Not great improvements, but certainly there were improvements. I like the fact that the sports were behind a team again when we got that equalising goal. The atmosphere was electric. It's a work in progress. I know mixed tenure is very short, so it has to be up and running, but it was never going to be a quick fix as such. But nevertheless, there's so much still that I've admired. I think we're trying to get amongst the opposition. It's very difficult at times because the golf is still obvious. But I think it's good that the momentum has been maintained and it's all to play for now in October. I do feel that, and particularly having watched the under-21s, that we're, I don't want to say we're writing off this campaign, but nothing matters except qualification. That in terms of style of football, that actually we'd almost need to pause that conversation because we're already possibly more than halfway through, if not definitely halfway through, Mick McCarthy's time in charge. As Gary said, he's little in no time with the players. If he did want to try something radically different, he doesn't have the time I, on the I training ground to do things, that. I have noticed things that are different. He changed the game just before half time when the Swiss were getting on top. He goes to a back five. Mm. He gives the shout from the sidelines and the players did it effortlessly. So that's a big change because that suggests that that work's been done on the training ground. Well, they've done a bit in the second half as well, Gary, which um, yeah, wouldn't, listen, be, wouldn't, listen, wouldn't be like this There are this improvements. There's no doubt about that. And this group of players although nowhere near our best group, are better than we were led to believe. That was interesting, actually, that sort of tactical shift of suddenly going to three at the back, going with the wing-backs. It was something 
that at one stage Martin O'Neill tried. It was something that I think at the start of this campaign we thought Mick McCarthy might try because we could play Seamus Coleman on the right of a back three and Matt Doherty as the wing back. Did you see enough in that period when Ireland did play with five across that it's something he might stick with for the final qualifiers? No, he won't stick with it. It was just a, a, um, to Needs negate must. the threat. Yeah, and the momentum that the Swiss team were building. Listen, listen, remember, when Mick initially came into the Ireland job first time round, he started off with a back five. We played that way. I remember playing with Roy as the centre of a back three because the German team at that time in Europe were doing it so well. Matthias Sammer, it didn't really work. He threw that out the window. And in, I don't expect him to do it at all going into those important games in October and November. Yeah, he, he had spoken at the squad announcement about how, because the Swiss play with three at the back, he had spoken about matching them. You know, at, at, a, at a point mm. in the game as an option, and it was something that he, you know, he, he tried to do. And I, I don't know, I, I sort of did a piece on this today. Like, I, I think it's very hard to quibble with anything Mick really has done. You know, in the sense of, um, it, actually, in the space of like three international windows, okay, one of them was quite long in terms of, but the other two actually, I mean, there's been a very short build up, like three days effectively for the Switzerland game, and only two full days of training. That he's actually managed to get a reasonably settled side. You sort of have an idea what the back four midfield mm-hmm. is going to be. It's only really been that Callum Robinson position where there's been a bit of debate. So he has managed to put a structure on it and um, to definitely make them a more sort of cohesive team. At the same time, I was a bit disappointed by Thursday. I actually thought it might be better. Now, maybe that's just the classic Irish thing of underestimating Switzerland a bit. I just was a bit worried by like large periods of the second half. I think that the late rally... Uh, and and spirit as it was, and you can't underestimate the importance of that. And, and it was it, the stadium was hopping, but like sort of minutes forty five to seventy five of the game, um, oh, I, I was I was suddenly lost a lot of the optimism I had about Ireland qualifier. I thought Denmark was good because it was an away day display, and I think they probably did try to be more positive on Thursday, but then actually they were picked up and a bit more and. Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not feeling as, as I'm not feeling the optimism there. Not thinking. I don't think there's any like you know screaming outrage over he should include this player or that player. It's like, not as if there's a Wes waiting to come in around. And it's not like there's outrage. I was just thinking on on Thursday. No, this isn't this isn't really happening. It's, it's you know, easier. I'd just be a bit worried about the run in now and and the, the the ability to get the results in the last three games. I'm I, I, I'm a bit my optimism has been dented a bit. I have to say. I think in a way it's easier for us to play away because like our record at home, apart from the Germany game, we don't beat good teams at home for years. And Maybe so. Yeah. yeah. We're just not good enough. Um, if you looked at kind of the heat map of the players in the first half. McLean and Stevens were practically up alongside each other mm. and Coleman and um, Robinson, the gap between them was absolutely huge. I thought Robinson was very poor. They targeted Stevens and I thought he had a fairly wobbly night. Um, if you compare the pass and Conor Horan passed the ball 27 times, Xhaka passed the ball 70 times. Yeah, but um, I actually think Ireland would have been quite happy with how they handled Granit Xhaka for large parts of that game yeah. because he was playing in an area where he could do couldn't do much damage no damage but if we if you saw as well in the first half when we do press high and we're anyway exposed we are so vulnerable mm. and their pace left us um, at six and sevens for most of the game we would about 35% possession um, but you know <sighs> Are our players much better than that? Um, I, I don't really think they are. Um, I think the debate now is, you know, you move on to the next game, Stevens is going to be suspended. Um, you know, I'm looking at the stats of Ryan Manning. He is, according to the championship stats, in terms of chances created as of last weekend, he was sixth in the list of most chance created in championships so far this season. I don't think he's even in the reckoning necessarily. No, I was just going to say, Manning Gary, is, like for going to Georgia for a qualifier, the chances of Mick McCarthy parachuting in Ryan Manning are no. the squad. slim and none. No. You know, Matt so Doherty had left back, that's the, he's back that, fit. That's the, I, mean, I think Greg Cunningham was probably mm. up there, but then the fact that Cunningham hasn't really played for Mick, he was brought in the summer. Um, the Doherty one is interesting. I think that we've had this debate over Doherty and Coleman in, in the same team, and Doherty at left back was mentioned, and Mick, any time that was mentioned from earlier in the year, he said, well, listen, I, I've great faith in Andy Stevens. I don't necessarily agree with Johnny's view on Stevens the other night. I think he started very badly, got you know, but got booked. Mm. But I actually thought he did. I thought he regrouped and did pretty well afterwards. But I mean, that's just a matter of opinion. Um, he's not. He's not available for the next game. It, I think it is. There is an argument for trying Doherty, but then obviously it's Georgia. We have a bit of history in Georgia. Granted, Mick hasn't managed Ireland in Georgia. He hasn't been through these games that O'Neill uh, was 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 through, and um, you, you kind of wonder how he will approach it, given that Switzerland is three days later, and even with certain players 
Um, as much as like the conditioning of, of someone like Leon Whelan is good, will he play him twice in three days? I wonder. These these are the talking points, you know, for, for going into that. He doesn't seem mad on playing McLean at left back, which I thought initially would be the solution. He seems to think no, he wants his energy on that side as a left sided midfielder. So I, I mean the Doherty idea is there you know I don't know what Gary thinks I don't know what your solution would be Gary but uh, someone like Cunningham hasn't played a competitive game for Ireland really you know in some time I wonder would that be deemed more of a risk than than a, a Cole or sorry a, a Doherty solution well he's had Doherty he's seen him at Wolves at left back and he knows he can do that job and that's a massive game that Georgia one bearing in mind it, it undone all Scotland's potential that qualifying campaign they lost out there and gave us the opportunity then but just looking at it in terms of you guys watching that game the other night and I'm fascinated to hear your insight into it as to why for that period do they get on top and this is this is the frustration I have is that I think Mick will look at it likewise and think that wasn't good enough certainly in terms of giving the ball away as much as we have done Seamus Coleman Ender Stevens, so good on the ball I saw Ender Stevens against Chelsea he was fabulous on the ball and yet those, both those fullbacks just kept giving the ball away and that's the frustration it's very hard then up against a team as expansive as, as Switzerland but ultimately the problem is and, and this is something he will address I've no doubt about that Shane Duffy has been absolutely immense for Ireland over the last four or five seasons there's no doubt about that but he's a problem in that he keeps dropping that defence. And in doing so, mm. that midfield unit gets stretched. Glenn Whelan then is at a space where centre forwards are coming off the back four. They're playing left or right at Glenn Whelan. The two advanced midfielders then get shook by that, drop deeper and deeper trying to protect. And that is the problem we have to get at. It's demanding Mick McCarthy in terms of when you play centre after him. You have to squeeze the pitch to allow your midfield to get close to the opposition, to allow your midfield to get in advanced areas. And Shane Duffy has a reluctance to do that and I believe he can do that I'm a massive fan of his and all that defending on the edge of the 18 yard box that we've seen over the last three or four years no one better at it Gary but why is he doing it to then? improve why, why is he doing it because it's a it's um probably something he's done it's not his fault it's not him playing to his strengths he's been asked to do that before and he's been asked to do that at Brighton as well it's changed a little bit now with Potter going in there it's found himself out of the team I've no doubt he has the character the strength of a character to come back and force his way back in. But as much as we build Shane Duffy as, as immense defender, and he is for Ireland, please don't get this wrong. But he is causing problems by continually dropping. Even that three or four yards, that one yard that he drops for the goal even, he should be stepping out, staying in the space to stop that strike on goal. And it is an issue. Mick will address it. Now, this is a manager also who's the best person to do that for Shane Duffy because this is a manager, Mick McCarthy, who had no pace. Yeah, he squeezed mm. the line up against Van Basten, Hullet, Scalacci, Lineker. So well, he can be taught to do it. Would that suggest, the very fact that Shane Duffy's doing that, that there's almost a lack of trust, like it's a catch-22, there's a lack of trust in the midfield in front of him that he feels if he does step up, that Ireland aren't in a position to keep hold of possession, that they'll get turned over quite easily in midfield, but you saw and it, suddenly Nathan, he filed himself period. out? You saw it in the first period, we squeezed up the pitch and then suddenly our midfielder ran mm. in. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Hendrick does that brilliant bit of skill to release McLean and we're in and around them and that feels like you're on the front foot again. I don't think it's naturally, he's doing it just to... Um, to sod the team and look after himself, not for one moment, because he's a great character, looks a great lad, great performer for us. But he just has that reluctance to keep dropping. You hear Richard Keogh, he's been obviously giving the instructions, the vocal centre off to say, stay up the pitch. And they have to do that. And ultimately, this is what you will, we're lacking a little bit in that team. Leaders, people who turn around and say, stop dropping. I know we're in no uncertain terms. I know my team was a lot better, I had better players, of course. But if I was to drop deep, I'd have got it from the manager on the sideline and I would have certainly got it from my midfield unit, no doubt. We still have a fairly dysfunctional midfield though. You know, Gary mentions the fact that the fullbacks kept giving the ball away, but you could see that as much as they kind of did want to go inside, which is the way they should mm. play football and recycle it when you have three midfielders. We have a holding midfielder whose legs are on the verge of being gone. We've we've obviously Hendrick who isn't playing regular football and hasn't been playing in central midfield for a long time. And we've Horahan who really didn't influence the game as much. He passed the ball well, but he just wasn't on the ball. So Stephen gets the ball and the obvious thing McGoldrick is just that out ball the whole time go down the line McGoldrick it's about an 80-20 ball for the defender and then Switzerland get the ball back and that's why they have two thirds of the ball well there so, was one incident I, I don't know if you saw this or if you were sitting in the same side of the press areas as we were right down below so Renda Stevens got the ball in that regular left pack position just about 10 yards inside his own half on the left hand touchline right in front of Mick McCarthy and he looked up and he wanted to do the right thing and I think it was Jeff Hendrick was about 10-15 yards inside him and he 
tried to bring Hendrik towards him. Hendrik's temptation for some reason was to run towards the Swiss goal, mm. realise he was doing the wrong thing, check back. By the time he'd done that, the Swiss midfielder realised that Hendrik was out of position. Stevens passes the ball to Hendrik, check midfielder steps out, but the only other option was James McLean hadn't come short, he'd gone long as yeah. well. So suddenly it looks as though Enda Stevens has lost possession, whereby he was trying to do the right See, thing and, and his midfield yeah. didn't let it, it, him. It's very, very hard as well when you've played for like Trapattoni and Martin O'Neill. You've played, like there's such a rigid system where midfielders were basically there to cut out the opposition mm. and not really get on the ball. I mean, you look at the under 21s last night, they're playing Armenia for one thing, but they are getting on the ball and they, everyone is confident on the ball. These Ireland players can't overnight just become, um, you know, possession based midfielders against grossly superior opposition, has to be said. Like, Ireland would be a run of the mill championship side if they were anything in England. Would, I, I, would, yeah, would I, I don't know. I, I think I, I mean, it's interesting because, like, you know, Gary has that insight of having played and been able to call it. And actually, it was after Denmark that I, I think that you made the same point or someone made the same point about the defenders dropping deep and it hasn't something I'd noticed to that degree but like, you had that period in the first half the other night where like, the Ireland were trying to press that was the whole thing let's and put pressure on them so far back. but then when, when Switzerland played the ball out the gap and, and that's what exposes that's what makes Glenn Whelan look a bit you know yeah. uh, that's what makes Glenn he, Whelan that, look slow he wasn't doing much wrong Whelan in terms but he was exposed by the, mm. the space Dan, Gary he, sorry you know. he couldn't cover that ground no. at 25 let alone no. 35 and that's no. the difference you need to protect him and he wants his midfielders in around him wants to keep it as compact as possible and that's and again like Duffy that's why he's done so well in the Martin O'Neill reign in terms of just sitting in front of that little pocket in front of the back four on the 18 yard box they have to get they have to get their units closer together and Mick will be working on that I've no doubt I think we need to look at O'Dowd as well to get him in, in some shape form Robinson was very very poor and Aaron Connolly last night played so well that it's clear that he has to be around the squad it's, at this it's, stage it's anyway. hard to, the one strike I think for me was that we don't have a huge amount of pace definitely and okay maybe the gaps that Gary mentions and the big pitch and the fact that Switzerland just have like Mbolo was just so fast and there was almost that gasp when he sort of took off at one stage and we don't necessarily have that that, like change of pace like McLean is not especially like he's 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 unbelievably fit and he comes to the fore like later in a match but he's not necessarily lightning fast you know and Robinson is someone who likes to come inside and like someone like O'Dowd is someone who can carry the ball with him and yeah, yeah we, 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 just lack, we just lack that sort of spark you know and that yeah. that bit of pace and if we're under pressure in games um, which you would imagine that you will be in the two away games. They have something that makes Switzerland, makes their centre half think, well, I'm not going to be able to get forward. I might be exposed in behind here. We didn't really have that in, in any way, and we don't have that. And I think that's the problem. We just looked a bit slow at, again at times, and it's, it's, it's hard to address that because like, there's no obvious player in the bench. You're like, well, maybe Odada, mm. but you're not really, like, you're not screaming there going, oh, he should be in it. And Odada yeah. hasn't even been one of the players coming on over the last couple of games, so you'd wonder where he is in the pecking order right now. Just on Odada, Gary, also. briefly before we go, to the rugby yeah. if Callum O'Dowda had played the last night with everything you're saying about Ireland dropping too deep and he played in that right side of position where Callum Robinson was would it have would he have made any difference could he have played it any differently who, listen, it doesn't matter who plays in that right um, side position if your centre halves keep dropping the pitch becomes far too big and we're not good enough to cover it in terms of against a strong athletics team like um, the Switzerland but even on your point earlier Nathan, about people coming and showing for Ender Stevens. Me and Kevin Caban were having this debate the other day. No midfielders, no dominant enough to really turn around to you as a defender and say, give me the ball. We don't seem to have any of that real character in there. And that's the frustrating thing. Mick will try and get that coaxer out of him. Hurahan has looked so much better since Mick come in. But I agree with Johnny. Let the game pass him by, apart mm -hmm. from his... His set piece deliveries were, which were sensational. He's unbelievable. How we don't score over there. Un unbelievable he's on his set plays. Great quality. Yeah, yeah um, like that. That player is obviously Roy Keane that he's talking about there. That's exactly what we want. But no, it's not just Roy Keane. It's not. It's, it's lesser players. It hasn't got mm. to be the best midfielder of his generation. It's any midfielder. Give me the ball. Be dominant. It's not about being a Vieira, Roy Keane. It's anyone at international level. We shouldn't Look. lose sight of the fact that um, at the same time it was really bleak with ten minutes left. We hit the bar and we scored out of a position that other teams would have just caved in. And they really need to be lauded. They're playing. They're they're not a great bunch of players, but you know, in fairness to them, they pulled out a result. They're unbeaten in the group. I would have bitten your hand off for eleven points at this stage, and uh, I came out of the ground very happy because I don't really think we're much better than that. Let's go to the Aviva Stadium because Ireland will head to the World Cup on the back of a victory. They've beaten Wales by 19 points to 10. Rory Best currently getting the acclaim of the crowd on his last international on home soil. Johnny Murphy is there. Overall, Johnny. 
Overall, a very good performance, I felt. Um, you know, I think they, they certainly had a huge attempt defensively, and I think they've probably come in for a bit of flack over the last couple of weeks about their uh, intent defensively and probably, you know, stuff down to their tackle technique was questioned. But they really, you know, they, they definitely turned defence into attack today. They really, you know, they got two two tries came from turnovers that were, were based on multi-phase, really hard going after the ball, double hits, uh, line speed, so big up. But yeah, the noise for Rory here now is pretty, <laughs> pretty exceptional to be fair. Um, but the, yeah, I think in general, the, uh, the for me, it was a massive step forward defensively. There was a huge amount of attacking intent as well. They looked to, to have a go. They never took the opportunity to kick points. Uh, they continued to go for the corners. Um, and, uh, you know, I think personally Wales were probably a bit low today. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, Ireland, would, they probably left a try or two out there. But they played, oh, I'd be very happy with, with the performance today. The result doesn't necessarily matter. but performance was definitely a big step forward anything in particular in terms of selection for that scotland game that will have joe schmidt thinking differently uh yeah i, I think ian henderson made a big uh, big impact when he came on um dave the coin it was a hia i think where he came on first so but he stayed on he, he had some really good impact points uh, the bench did really well when they came on uh, jack carty controlled the game very well he had a couple of really good um tactical kicks that 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 gained a huge amount of territory but i think probably for me the biggest one would probably be i would say probably in the second row in the sense that ian henderson had a big big impact when he came on uh, he caused all sorts of havoc at mall time when they were uh, when Wales were trying to maul get in on the ball sacking it uh, they got two or three turnovers there that were directly from, from his work so um, yeah I, I would have been very impressed with his, with his cameo off the bench that victory means Ireland are the world's number one team yeah, well, let's hope it's the same in uh, in November. Um, I think you know the performance today uh, is certainly a stepping stone to them getting back to where they were in 2008. Um, and uh, what I really liked was their intent to offload. You know, they were looking for an offload, especially the two centres. Um, I think they they played very well together. So that's maybe another selection thing. Uh, Gary Ringo was very good when he came on the wing. To be fair. All right, Johnny, difficult to hear you with all that noise in the background. We'll let you go for now. We'll have plenty more to come from Johnny Murphy. He'll be chatting with Will, and that'll all be up on offtheball.com across the evening, so you can get his thoughts there. But Ireland, world number one's rugby team, Johnny. How does that work? I mean, World rankings. It's a um, complex mathematical system do, um, that reflects genuinely the best team in the world right now. Oh, yeah. Friendlies, as flawless, we call them in soccer. Like, flawless the system. tests... Um, New Zealand scored 92 points today. But they're not the world's number one team. Our dreadful Ireland form are. over 2019, as a ma- in, in the main, has obviously just it has, it's I, not. I, I assume it's that the golf one is a cal- calculate on an average over, over a, a period couple of years. Time. Yeah, so then you have one bad month that suddenly, you know, you cancel out a great month from a couple of years ago when you drop down or something. Yeah. What about the soccer team? What what are our rank? What's our rank? Twenty eighth or something like that? Is it? Take that. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. So, Some, uh, somewhere between 28th and early 30s, 34th. I'd say early 30s, I'd say. <laughs> All right, we'll find that out. We'll factually get that quite soon. But uh, just to let you know, as part of our countdown competition, we gave you the chance to win an Ireland jersey a little bit earlier. We asked you to identify our mystery voice who was watching the All Blacks stick 92 points on Tonga this morning. I have to say I remain a little bit unconvinced. You oh, see, oh. Oh. I, can, I can give I you a help on that one. I can't believe we missed that line. Another Dublin I Six think, foul. What, what, what did, can you just play that again? I have to say I remain a little bit unconvinced. Our intro should have been, can you identify our mystery voice Voice talking about Wednesday's <laughs> rugby <laughs> presenter? Let I alone have to say I remain a little bit unconvinced. <laughs> Let alone what happened in the Borgosh Arena. Oh. Oh, wow. If you keep going there, Johnny, I'm going to keep playing Brian O'Driscoll. It was Brian O'Driscoll. Congratulations to Denny Byrne. You've won that Ireland jersey. For anybody who didn't win, don't worry. We've more prizes to give away tomorrow and over the next couple of weeks. It's all thanks to the Vodafone team of us. Everyone in. It's almost four o'clock. We need to take a break and news. Join that conversation. Text us on 53106. Text costs 30 cent. in the kitchen. The drummer you asked me to get. Oh, yeah. He's great, isn't he? A plumber. I asked you to get a plumber. 
should have gone to Specsavers for €400 Euro off selected hearing aids. Offer ends 30th of September 2019. Ask in store for details. Ireland's best mobile network just got better. It's like going to the match with your best mate and then finding out you're sitting beside your favourite ex-player and they're like, you know your stuff. And you're like, this is even better. With Vodafone, get 30 gigs of data and even better, a free Samsung Galaxy S10 when you switch to Red Complete. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready? Offer available to new Vodafone customers signing up to Red Complete 24-month contract for €60 a month while stocks last. Offer ends 30th of September 2019. See Vodafone.ie for terms. Happy retirement, Maura. Actually, I'll be retiring next. What if I take out my pension fund in one lump sum or put it into something smart? And you're sure these horses are winning? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe I should talk to someone about this. If you're thinking about retiring, use some important financial decisions to make. So no matter who your pension is with, ask your financial broker or advisor about retirement planning with Irish Life. A smart way to make the most of what you have and fully embrace your retirement. We know Irish Life. We are Irish Life. Irish Life Assurance PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Funny how small things matter most. Imagine if all 10 million cups of tea we drink in Ireland every day were powered by 100% green energy and not by burning fossil fuels. And imagine if all our dishwashers, hair dryers and TVs were powered by green energy too. Isn't that a future worth acting on? Go to sseertristy.com now to view our range of switching offers and join us in changing the world, one cup of tea at a time. SSE Air Tristy. This is Generation Green. Terms and conditions apply. Be confident in the next car you buy. At Dundeal, you can find cars from over 1,000 trusted dealerships nationwide. Now you can search for cars with warranties and monthly finance options to meet your budget. Dundeal, Ireland's largest car showroom in the palm of your hand. Football Index, the football stock market. Remember that first time on the terraces where it all began. The heroes, the villains, the highs, the lows. All the while, you were learning. Now use that knowledge on Football Index. Join tens of thousands of fans trading the world's top players. Football Index, the game changed. App available, 18 plus, terms and conditions apply, gamble responsibly. The Sport Ireland Campus Blanchard's Town is the home of Irish sport, not just for our athletes, but for you in the community. Check out our amazing offers for families with kids' camps, sport academies and birthday parties. Or for adults, why not join our gym with a 50-metre pool or your club? School friends can book one of our world-class indoor or outdoor facilities, including our athletics track, soccer, basketball or badminton courts, and many more. Check us out on sportirelandcampus.ie. Hot pink, green velvet, turquoise, teal. There are so many colours and styles to choose from at the Easy Living Interiors Sofa Event. Gorgeous leather fabric and velvet sofas, sumptuous armchairs, a stunning range of accent chairs to add a pop of colour. All reduced and almost everything in stock. So all you have to do is sit back and relax. The sofa event now on at Easy Living Interiors. Cork, Waterford, Navan, Nace, Sandyford, Drogheda and now open in Wexford. Does your office need a facelift? A new look reception area? A modern open plan office layout? Perhaps some stylish new glazed partitions? Or a cool staff canteen? Not sure where to start? Whatever your need, Hunt Office Interiors has the expertise to guide you. With showrooms in Dublin, Limerick, Cork and Belfast. Why not talk to our team about transforming your office environment? Contact Hunt Office Interiors today for a free consultation. Call us on 1890 771100 or email interior at huntoffice.ie Hunt Office for all things office Don't like the sound of that? Then how does the Etihad Global Sale sound? Fly business and surf in Sydney from €3,327 or relax in Abu Dhabi from €2,279 Step outside your time zone with the Etihad Global Sale Book by 13th September at etihad.com T's and C's apply Etihad Airways Choose well Across Ireland on 106 to 108 FM and at Newstalk.com. This is Newstalk. Good afternoon from the newsroom. I'm Fiona Ash. It's been claimed Boris Johnson could go to prison if he refuses to delay Brexit in the face of court action. Lord Macdonald, who's the former Director of Public Prosecutions in the UK, says it would not be an extreme outcome. 
The British Prime Minister has said he won't agree an extension with Brussels, despite Parliament passing a law forcing him to do so. Ex-Tory MP Dominic Grieve voted against the government last week. I have no desire to see uh, the Prime Minister behind bars. What I do want to see is the Prime Minister ceasing to behave like a spoilt child having a tantrum. Uh, This is ridiculous behaviour. He's got to understand that he has to operate within the rules of the law and our constitution. The Irish Farmers Association president says he's hopeful fresh talks aimed at resolving the beef dispute will end the crisis. Discussions are expected to resume on Monday, three weeks after the original talks broke down. Farmers are calling on factories to give them a better price for their animals. However, Meat Industry Ireland says the price they get represents the average in a tough EU market. IFA president Joe Healy says it's important a resolution is found. You know, there's no point going into any talks that you feel... Uh, there isn't a, a bit of hope of, of um, you know, getting an end to the crisis that's there. So I hope that everyone comes in around the table with the same view in mind, and that's to end the crisis, get farmers back to what they're doing, they do best. The family of a six-year-old boy who fell five stories at the Tate Modern in London say he's making amazing progress. They've shared a message on a fundraising page to thank well-wishers for donating over £54,000 to help him after it happened last month. Despite being unable to speak or move his body, the boy's family say they've seen him smile and laugh. For all the latest news updates, you can go to our website, that's newstalk.com. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. You can find our lowest car insurance price online, guaranteed. Staying mainly dry for the rest of today with a mix of clouds and sunny spells. There's just a small chance of some isolated showers. Top temperature is 14 to 19 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This is News Talk. All right, you're very welcome back to Saturday's Off the Ball. Our football coverage brought to you with thanks to Paddy Power. For information on responsible gambling, visit dunlouis.net. Hey all, back in 82-83, I spent a fair bit of time with trials across the water. One of my abiding memories was on Merseyside when the coaches threw water bottles at us if we didn't move when we passed the ball. And I was the centre back. The midfielders would get murdered if they weren't within three yards of the ball when a defender or a winger got on the ball. Even when I continued my illustrious career playing junior soccer, the one phrase stuck in my head is, pass and move, give the player options. Now to my point. It's a good starting text. This is a good intro. This is a text. This is a text. Must be on the, you know, it must be typed. It must be one of those free web texts on your laptop you can type them in. Definitely, it's a long one. Now to my point. I felt very sorry for Enda at fullback. He came in for a bit of criticism by pundits for an iffy start, but if you look back at the game, every time he got the ball, the Swiss were after him and no one came to his side. Options. And if you look at Coleman, he spends the night pointing at other players where he wants to put the ball. Why can't they be in the right places? They don't seem to want the ball. Love to know your thoughts. Especially Dan, says Des. I agree with Des. It was all going really well. I'd go for Gary's <laughs> view of mine, to be honest. He's right. He's, he's, it's a base point we're all making, though. The midfielders more or less aren't looking for the ball and they don't really have an output. And, and Gary, just, so those three Irish midfielders, Whelan, Hendrick, Howard, when you watch them at club level, are they different? Do they look for the Whelan, ball more at club level? I don't think Whelan's particularly different. I think he's made a good living out of doing what he does. Um, Hendricks, we always keep going on about that Euro 16 form and the likelihood is, and I, I should know really because tournament football is about momentums. perhaps he'll never hit those heights again you know, I experienced something like that a good tournament, never really got to those heights again it happens, Hurahan looks like a good footballer, you want to see his personality coming out like we said and it seemed like it was but as for Ender Stevens, I watched him at Chelsea and they could not cope with him in terms of his confidence. And I know he's playing club football and I know you look at him and think at 28 years of age, but nevertheless, he's like a youngster going into that Ireland team and the, the, obviously the euphoria of, uh, and the thrill of having that shirt playing in a big game in Dublin. But you just want him to remember that just to do what you've been doing in the Premier League. And that's getting on the ball, making your passes, driving forward. But there's no dispute in the fact that at times there's not that many midfielders looking for that ball square. Let's hear from Enda Stevens. hear what he had to say to Stephen Doyle after the game. Might have been a couple of misplaced passes in the first half, but you really grew into it and got better as the game wore on. Yeah, it was, it was tough. Uh, first half, I couldn't really get the grips with, uh, as I said, how they were playing and, and where the space was and where the passes were. And, and that was a frustrating thing, but we got ourselves together in the second half, at half-time, you kind of 
see, seeing it through, seeing it through the tough spell, which we had to do, and got in at half time, had a talk, had a chat, and we came out second half. We started off, we started second half well. Is it the yeah. final tour that you need to kind of improve in? Because to play from, you know, I suppose back up to the midfield, and it's just that final third, maybe you need to kind of, I suppose, find that killer instinct. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I just, there's room for improvement all over the pitch. Um, it's just teams are going to come here they're going to be difficult to be they're going to be difficult to get the ball off and they're going to be difficult to play against and uh, we just got to as you said work on what we're doing and, and, and believe in what we're doing and we are and we, you, could, you could see that we went to goal behind Have we seen what they did tonight would you feel confident they're going to Geneva to face Switzerland? Yeah you'll always feel confident going um, we go till the end you know we, we uh, with them having a lot of possession we, we kind of limited the little chances even though like they did have a lot of possession around that, the edge of our box and he did cut us open for the goal but I thought we had just as much chances he did say there sorry Dan he yeah. did say in the first in the first half I couldn't find the pass I couldn't find the space the second half was certainly no better for Ireland at all and he that was a difficult interview because how could they feel confident going to Geneva they've had 35% of the ball at home yeah it's, it's strange when you think about it though Look, we've had a debate on here before and everyone's had the debate about Matt Doherty you know and why you know where does Matt Doherty fit in and like Emma Stevens has played wing back for his club mm. for the last couple of seasons um, and even when Ireland switched to that sort of back three or back five the other night like he was shifted in to be one of the left centre halves as opposed to you know being the James McLean in that role and it would be interesting because he is used to probably having the freedom of the that flank ahead of him and McLean is a, is a particular type of player that as you mentioned you know he, he looks for a particular type of ball you know and um, I think there is we, don't, we, we haven't talked about Stevens adjusting to wing back in the same way that we do laboriously about Matt Doherty exactly. because we're trying to fit him into the team mm. whereas it's sort of assumed that Stevens would play of course he played left back for years so it's not as if it's a position like he only played it for a season or something that's where he grew up um, but I think obviously at Sheffield United he has an adjustment they have some they have some good footballers in that team as well as like Norwood who's dropped out away from international football now at Northern Ireland then they have a pattern to play they're, they're used to playing together like their centre halves are getting forward as well you know so he's in a system there that he he's, he's very used to and then the Irish one is, is probably very difficult so uh, I think that's part of the challenge that he's faced You would look at James McLean's performance again the last night and listen the energy was there and right at the very end he was the one who still had the energy to win the ball back get that cross in for the equaliser but when Stephen Kenny comes in you would suspect he's going to be the first one out the, the door. The, 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 I don't know, though. Was, uh, you would, like, I, Kenny was asked about Aaron Connolly last night, and um, and I asked him about it, and like, the, the pieces up, that uh, asked him about Aaron Connolly in the sense of, well, do you have to sort of encourage Aaron Connolly to take risks and, and, and you know, to play that way? And Kenny's answer was, well, you know, he, this is Aaron's style, he's an outlet, he's not going to be like James McLean, he's not going to be getting behind the full-back making tackles, you know. But you have to remember as well that Kenny... Like started James McLean's career, mm. they worked together very closely at Derry City. They have a good relationship. Um, you know, I've I've heard Stephen Kenny speak before about his belief in James McLean that he, you know in the number of positions he can play. And I think it's interesting that Mick McCarthy the other day even spoke about how McLean is a much better player than he thought he was. And as much as like we we, we have this view of like you know Stephen Kenny is a you know he, he as a as a, you know he's, he's a football guru and all like his teams have also worked hard as well like he's he's had players in his team that wouldn't necessarily in his teams it wouldn't necessarily be you know there's not it wasn't ever just like 11 technical players mm. you know passing the ball around to each other he's, he's had people to 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 cope with deficiencies in terms of energy and work rate and it's funny we spoke about the like people wonder why does James McLean play and then we're speaking about maybe how at times we looked a bit slow and how maybe you know we we don't necessarily have have like great energy in some areas of the side, and that's no doubt McLean offers. And like, you know, Ireland wouldn't have got the point without James McLean the other day. That's that's an absolute fact. Is he offering enough, Gary? Aside from the energy, James McLean right now. Yeah, recovery, defensive challenge when they broke on us. Good job he was there. Otherwise, the, the, the forward had been cleaned through. But uh, again, speaking with Kevin, who was a left sider. But um, a winger in his younger days who would go on the outside with his strength and power, Kev, but then in later years was able to play inside, had that ability to play on a half turn, find pockets of space. I don't, I don't believe that James will ever become that type of player. But I agree with you. I think he's, he's, a, he's a, still an asset to us. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I just, 
I, I understand in terms of everyone talking about Stephen Kenny coming in and, 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 and using Dan's words, this guru of football, but you have to understand. I've seen Mick McCarthy play expansive football, been part of it with that initial Irish team, and I know the quality was higher. So if these players could do it, he'd be wanting them to do it. There's no doubt about that. It just frustrates me a little bit that we talk about Stephen Kenny as being this expansive manager where we just say that Mick McCarthy's a pragmatic, dogged one. It's, it's, not, it's not accurate. Yeah, the, 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 in fairness to McLean, um, the, the, the support that he gave Stevens, who was clearly targeted, he gave him huge support. Um, was that was worked on, Johnny, wasn't it? You yeah. could see, in terms of the threat from right back of that Swiss team normally gets forward so often, you could actually see the work and the and the, 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 the role that James was given in terms of protecting him, and he'd done it well. Yeah, and like in fairness, the last 10 minutes, he was like, I, I, you can't, I, I'm not really a fan of McLean as a footballer. I think he's very, very limited. But what he did the last 10 minutes um, was, was absolutely immense. If I'm a fullback, I'd love to be marking James McLean any day of the week. He's, he's a bit of a one trick pony, he doesn't have much to offer. You look at Connolly last night, he's taken on, admittedly, an Armenian under 21 right back. <laughs> different ball game he was so dynamic though I mean he's already played Premier League this season he was brought on against Man City in a meaningless game ultimately um, I spoke to somebody about Connolly um, who was based in Galway and he was going to one of the hotels in Galway this in the summer of last season Connolly was in there pretty much every day he was there in the gym in the gym in the gym this in the summer of last season there's this notion out there that Connolly has a kind of an attitude issue um, and I've come across this uh, a lot but watching him last night he totally upstaged Troy Parrott um, his little dinks inside for a couple of chances. He was unplayable in the first half, and he he has to be at the very least on the cusp of the squad. Um, I think with Mick now, Mick's not going to take off James McLean because there's too much at stake mm. to be taking gambles. Um, but Connolly is clearly a better prospect than McLean at this stage. It's probably going a bit far to say it's a notion about Connolly and his attitude because it's been out there. A lot of people who've worked with him have raised questions about it, but. He's still very, very young. Oh yeah, he's, he's nineteen. Like he's like he was left out. He's been hasn't been included in an under nineteen mm. squad within the last year. But when you see his ability, is ludicrous, you know. But there were very, I think there were very good reasons, and I think that the under nineteen management team are very well regarded, and it's clear they know what they're doing. So they clearly had an issue with Connolly at some point that they didn't include him. Um, and it's fair to say he's probably had to win over a couple of people. Uh, but if he keeps playing the way he he does, and and like, you know, Johnny's right. Like you know, he, um, there's no doubt that he doesn't work hard or something like that. And uh, he's in or around the Premier League team at 19, so he's clearly a very talented player. As I said, you don't you don't make you know draw conclusions about someone's character at 19. Like he's got a lot of time to 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 grow up and become a top player and I think he's got a great chance of being that whether that's in the next month um, I, I don't think Mick's not going to throw someone like that into a qualifier to start them at all I would make the argument that these days it's not as if you, you name seven subs in the bench like you can actually name like you can name a 23 man mm. squad you can have 12 subs on the bench and I uh, you know I would make the point that someone like a Connolly or even an Obafemi someone who's like a striker like our strikers on the bench the other night you've got Hogan who's a bit of a poacher um, James Collins again wouldn't be regarded as say someone who's especially quick. Okay, there was Ronan Curtis, Maguire wasn't available. I think it would be nice if the game was going a particular way that you had maybe a Connolly or an Obafemi just in case the game was stretched in such a way that you thought someone like that might be an asset. I think that's as far. I think to be realistic and calling for someone to be involved any more than that is is completely unrealistic. But I think it is worth it is worth thinking about as as unlikely as I think it is to happen um he like sometimes you have a player like that who's in the form of his life and he is you I hate comparisons I hate going he's, he reminds you of this and that because it's so unfair but he does have this like low center of gravity and this Damien Duff ability mm. to go past players which is sort of thrilling and we haven't had someone with those attributes for a while the other thing about that sorry Nathan is that um as much as our striker situation is bleak at the moment Magola gets his first goal with four strikers in the squad who haven't scored um, um, Connolly doesn't really see himself as a winger. Connolly sees himself as a as, striker. a as a striker who's basically had to make way for the likes of you know Ida obviously the other night. I don't think Adam Ida is going to become a top top player, but he's eighteen. He's eighteen. I I think um, he's eighteen. Between you can't make any Femi, judgment on him. Uh, no, you can make judgment on him because you can you can see him playing. He, like he wasn't great last night. I've seen him a few he's times. 18. He, he, yeah, but he's eighteen. <laughs> Troy Parrott is seventeen. <laughs> Troy Parrott is seventeen. He's the second best striker got, at Spurs. He's got a four year deal at Norwich and he's yeah, in the first okay. team squad. My prediction would he be can, that. He just can't of, make a judgment. Of Obafemi, Troy Parrott, and how Connie. much have you seen of them play? 
Uh, I've seen a Parrot play maybe... Uh, sorry, I've seen Parrot was the first time last night I'd seen him play. Okay. I've seen Ida three or four times. So obviously I'm I'm making it on the on the base of a few games. Obafemi? But between Obafemi, Obafemi two or three times. And I'm, you're, you're ranking their career No, No, I'm not ranking it. Just give me a sec. I'm saying between Obafemi and you can... What if you, if you want to bring in Parrot, Connolly and Parrot, um, th- those four players and Ida, there's a very good chance one of them will become a very good centre forward because Connolly doesn't see himself as a winger. Um, Troy Parrot is... Officially, the, the man behind Harry Kane at Spurs scored last night, played pretty well. As what much do you mean the man behind Harry Kane at Spurs, though? He's, 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 he says he's his second striker. He, he, like, he's he's, he's his the next in line. In the 18. Like, no, but he, that's what he said. He's second but if Harry Kane Harry gets Kane. injured, Troy Parrott isn't going to start instead of him. Probably he's not. Or young min Sunwell. He may, maybe it's well. He's 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 not a striker though either. Like Parrot is is more of a striker. Like Son is more of a number ten player. Um, as much he clearly rates him. He's only seventeen. Basically, what I'm saying is, of those four players, there's a very good chance one or two of them have a very very good future. They're young, and what I saw from Conley last night, I mean, you'd be wowed by it. I have to say, I, I thought he was amazing. Hmm. We have a lot of texts in about the under 21s. Uh, our three under 21 midfielders got on the ball quite a lot last night, particularly Connor Coventry and Jason Malumphy. I love Malumphy. Uh, Malumphy's a really good player, but he's a prospect. He's, he's, he's got a bit, bit to go. Aaron Connolly is a threat on the left hand side. Very quick. What's the latest of Ryan Johansson and Luca Connell? Have they declared for us yet? Uh, Luca Connell was in Tala last night. Um, he's been called up to the 21s late, but uh, Luca Connell has gone to Celtic and, and hasn't necessarily been around hmm. the squad. I think people, I, I, it sort of bugs me. I see Ryan Nolan now has left Inter Milan to go to a third division team in. Uh, a third division team in Italy like the people's obsession with guys because they're on the books of Bayern Munich or Inter Milan someone <laughs> on the books of Bayern Munich or Inter Milan is exactly the same as Glenn McCauley was on the books of Liverpool mm. Corey Whelan was on the books of Liverpool like it's because they're uh, it's Bayern Munich or Inter Milan it's like they're still we've got we've got we've got academy players at clubs of the same standards but because they are there's, there's this obsession about oh get that guy from overseas, we need him in. Now, Johansson is clearly talented, he's around the Bayern Munich, he's been involved with the first team, but so was Ryan Nolan. Mm. Stephen Kenny, as far as I know, looked at the centre-halves available to him. He got a bit of stick for not picking Ryan Nolan, but actually thought that Masterson, Darrow, Shea, Liam yeah. Scales, he had them ahead of them, and I think actually he might be right, you know, in terms of where, where things go. So, um, it just it annoys me as a sort of a thing of, oh, what's going on with Ryan Nolan? Like, he should have been in, or Johansson. I mean, people need to watch them play first. And decide, like, Johansson came and played for an Irish under-19 team. I spoke to people at the game. Yeah, he was good, but he wasn't, like, mm. head and shoulders above And I think, reading between the lines, that seems to be the view of the underage managers as well. I know Dan looted last night. I was desperately disappointed with the crowd in Tala. Three and a half thousand. Um, I know the game Why? was... Like, I, I just thought there was a lot more. Like, it was your first chance to see Troy Parrott for a lot of people. This could be a future star. There's so much hype about him. Um, it's Stephen Kinney's second game in charge. You know, like, I, I, I honestly thought this place well, The senior be... team have played the night before. Yeah, but who cares? A lot of people so? have gone to that. I think because it's just... They're because, spending uh, the money to go. Yeah, and also, kids are just back in school. Very expensive time. People are getting back into a routine. The previous game was a Sunday at 4 o'clock, was it? Can't remember actually. It was Perfect a perfect time was, actually, for people yeah. to yeah. get Shamrock out with their families. Shamrock Rovers were obviously there were playing. There was the League of Ireland in, games on. Mm, a couple I mean, of League of Ireland games. I, I thought there'd be a lot more than three there, there are, To be fair, there are a lot of people who will be slaughtering McCarthy or Stephen Kenny or, or future managers for not picking such and such a young player who, who wouldn't bother to get in the Lewis to go out and watch these yeah. players. I mean, that is that is an element of our supporter culture but um, yeah a lot of people who would have been at the game I think were at other matches last night as well Gary ju- just on that next generation of Ireland forwards yeah. and there's no doubt that Stephen Kenny will be desperately hoping one of them starts getting some first team football over the next year that they can put some pressure on that group of four who are there at the moment who, with Dave McGoldrick if it's just that one goal is it possible from afar to watch these players at under 21 level and and see which of them are most likely to make it? Or do you just feel you have to wait and see how their their club career pans out? Yeah, listen, they've got loads of challenges ahead in terms of coming through. That's why I'm always reluctant when people are raving about under-18s, under-21s, what have you. And I agree with Dan. I saw a lot of Bayern Munich over the summer, and Johansson was one of the players in around the first team. But that was because they brought eight youth team members on tour with them. So that's just trying to give them experience. That doesn't necessarily mean he's at that level. But I tell you a player who I did feel that I'm so excited about, and that's Troy Parrott. I saw him play for Tottenham against Manchester United, and obviously Smalling at centre-half has looked at a 17-year-old leading in line for Tottenham, and he's tried to bully him. He's tried to smother him, 
and Parrott on two occasions just rolled him, took him away. On a third occasion, flicked it over his head. Smallin never went looking for him again. In fact, <laughs> started treating him with a little more, more, more respect. And then I saw Troy Parrott uh, for Tottenham against Inter Milan against really steely, grisly centre halves, and he did just the same thing again. And that's at 17 years of age. Now, bearing in mind at 17, technical ability, you can have all that. Yeah, that's great. But do you have the physicality to cope with the with the athleticism of elite level football? And he certainly. And he looks like he has. I'm really excited about him, but at the same time, I don't want to put so much pressure on him. He's, he's grown in the last point. year. I would oh, say yeah. the, 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 the physicality Physically is, is such a point because I saw him play for the 17s in Chesterfield last year. Like, and and I sp- people at Belvedere who I mean like, Troy Parent hasn't been away that long mm. he hasn't been living in England that long at all uh, it's pretty much last summer he would have been over a lot now but actually properly is is sort of development in that time it's it's sort of it, it's it actually surprised me last night he looked like the oldest player on the he pitch I, I couldn't you believe that yeah, I mm. couldn't believe that I'd heard yeah. about it and I'd seen him on telly but actually seeing it on in the flesh last night it was striking and Dan yeah if you could pick one club one manager to be looking after a talent like that. Exactly. It would be Pochettino. It's the mm. perfect place for him. It really is. In terms of, listen, he's got a manager. There's a pathway for those young players to come through. We've seen him do it at Southampton, Tottenham. But also, he's looking at a Harry Kane, who wasn't a Wayne Rooney, a Robbie Keane, a Michael Owen, destined for greatness. he just done it through sheer hard work. What a, what a role model for him. You know, on Wednesday night, Off the Ball had a, actually a relevant football interview because Stephen Kenny came on the show and he did talk about Troy Parrott and um, he just was really extolling the person, the personality that he is. But I still make this point, if what Gary is saying there is true and you're taking on Chris Small and you're taking on Inter Milan defenders, um, Callum Robinson is ahead of Troy Parrott in terms of mixed thinking to come off the bench. Um, would, where would Callum Robinson fit in at Spurs? Because Troy Parrott, again, he scored last night, so he's taken on at least under 21 up Yeah, but Callum Robinson... Like, 17. Callum was, Robinson scored in the Premier League last week Callum, against Chelsea. Callum Robinson as a teenager, like, I mean, this is a, a slightly different topic, but Callum Robinson has around 50 underage caps from England. Like, you know, mm. as, as a teenager, he was in with the best of the best of his generation in England. In England. I think Troy Parrott is going to be a very good player, but, like, Callum Robinson has played probably a couple of hundred league games now and I think that that does matter like Troy Parrott was good last night but, but like he wasn't like he, he wasn't sensational he last wasn't night sensational, he, but he, he scored he, he, he scored he three chances yeah I, I know he missed another chance in the second yeah. half there's a lot of pressure on him it's it's not about the ability I think like pe- people obsess sometimes and like um, and as I said Gary's far more qualified to talk about this but people obsess about the levels yeah it's true that the highest level of the Premier League is is a, is a much bigger deal uh, sorry is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a better standard than probably a lot of international football nowadays in fact lower level Premier League might be in terms of standard or whatever but it's the, actually it's the expectation it's the responsibility yeah, it's the, the pressure, pressure. it's yeah. everything that comes with it like Troy Parrott's gone onto a pitch with Spurs with guys he's training with every day so he's in an environment that he's very comfortable with you throw him into an Ireland squad at 17 with all his family all his friends all of us to be fair media played a lot of part you know played a certain part of this guy's the next this and that and he's out on the pitch and, and if, if he doesn't go if mm. he doesn't do something sensational it's suddenly like she's Parrott like he was a bit disappointing and these are World Cup qualified are you yeah, yeah, our, our, our game against Georgia, which I think is going to be very, very tricky, right? 15 minutes to go. Would it be nice to have the option of Troy Parrott to come off the bench? No, my point would be, my, my argument would be someone like Troy, who is trying to still figure out what his position is, really, in terms of whether he's a, a, a 10, t- a or, 10 a nine. or a 9. I, I actually, I would have watched that game last night. That's changed my view. I'm like, no. My argument would be, actually, it'd be more of a Connolly or an Obafemi, that speedy player yeah. that maybe. And I'm actually thinking... Them. I'd put them on the bench now, I would. I right. think Para. I think you need to figure out what works for him. I don't think you can just throw him out there. Do you Personally, bring Conley in for the Georgia squad? I, I, I would probably put him in the 23. Or Obafi- like Obafemi's probably ahead of him in terms of mm. like club experience. I just think we need that type of option on the bench to look at. That's my opinion. Make, I think make, 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 Para like, will take a bit of time to figure out where... To protect the player. Where, yeah, there is yeah. that. Because this, this guy could be playing for him for the next 15 years or whatever. But Stephen Kenny has some like um, selections, choices to make, which is amazing Like for these games. And he's, he's made the point that this isn't a problem. This is a great thing. But, you know, it, it must be the best array of 21 strikers we've had in a long, long time. Is that purely a coincidence that suddenly Stephen Kenny has arrived in and all these good young players are there at his disposal? Because we've all been to under 21 internationals over the last four or five years and cannot remember one of them. Some of the most depressing experiences of my life out in Tala, a thousand people, not one decent player among the 11 who started the game. Why have they all suddenly come at the one time? Well, I think there's a couple of things. I mean, 
to be fair, like Stephen Kenny has inherited these players. Mm. I think that definitely since he's come in, uh, there's been more of an attempt, and maybe it's because of where he's going. I think there's been more of an attempt to fast track players. Like the previous, like Noel King would have been regarded as someone who would have been very loyal to, to certain players. So if we started a campaign with someone, he would keep them. You know, he had a squad. Basically, he had a squad, and I don't think I'm not so sure if he would have had uh, as young an under 21 team. I think there might have been a tendency to more so veer towards. Um, you know, slight guys who've played a bit more first team football. Now, as it happens, this is just a very good crop, I think, coming through anyway. But I think there's possibly been more of a uh, an eagerness to fast track them through, and therefore it looks more exciting. I mean, ultimately, like Aaron Connolly and Ida and all these players, I mean, they're they're Troy Parrot. They're the product of good schoolboy co- coaches around the country who've created them. But look, there have been times in the past where we, we've we've had some exciting players coming through, but they weren't necessarily all brought into the 21s together at the mm. same time. They might have been spread across the age groups. It's possible at a different time some of these lads would have been in the 19s or, or still even in the 70s. I think, yeah, I think on that, Tom Moen has had a huge role pro- everyone who sp- speaks well. And, and Colin O'Brien as Colin well. Colin O'Brien at the 17s and um, as well as that, they know Stephen Kenny is the manager of the Irish uh, senior team in a year. So they want to play. I'm sure it would be all the easy. players are turning up. Yeah, of course. In because general. Noel, Noel King's team, by all accounts, it wasn't it wasn't uber professional the way they kind of they, they were, it wasn't that important the 21s. We have a horrible record in the 21s. Now there's a lot of uh, you know there's a, gla- a lot of a glamour about it, and they also want to play. And I, I, if I were an under 21 player, I'd bloody well want to be playing Malumpy and, the, and, and the, Parrot the, and all the, these the, lads. The, the criticism of the 21 section would have been that whether that was right or wrong, whether it was fair or unfair, that that squad was very much closely tied in with the recruitment of players mm. and Noel King had a dual role which did relate to recruitment so there was a lot of like players coming into the squad um, and the profile I mean you look back maybe 18 months ago or so and I remember you know doing something along the lines of that we played a game I think Ronan Curtis played actually Ronan Curtis was born in London so it's a bit even though he grew up in Ireland but I think we had something like maybe three Irish born players in the starting level or four across the squad you suddenly fast forward to last night and actually um, um, Connor Coventry is born in England, but I'm trying to think of the other players in the squad. I'm not sure that anyone else was. So um, th- th- there's, there is more of an Irish profile, but that's what the 21s section probably was. It was caught up yeah. with something else. Like no- Noel King's last match, they dropped in Sh- Jordan Shipley from Coventry, who wasn't going to be eligible for the next campaign, but just got dropped in to play one match, for example. And it was just a bit odd, you know, whereas now there's a bit more of a coaches you would seem to be working together and building together. Gary, what? do you think the role of the under-21 should be? Ultimately, to create a pathway to that senior team. Of course it is. You don't want the managers who are just solely interested in winning games at that level. Of course, you have to win games as part of any player's development, but it's to create players for the senior team. Of course it is. And it's great that Dan is mentioning all those coaches that played a massive role because Stephen Kenny's getting an awful lot of credit for, for very little having been done with these players. Absolutely. Yeah. And in fairness to Kenny, this bizarre... Um, succession plan that's, you know, I mean, as, as strange as it is, he's a great chance to inculcate some sort of a pattern and system with players that he thinks will have a Well, I thought that was the most impressive thing. I thought there were clear... Granted, it's Luxembourg and Armenia, so... Yeah. But Sweden, on Tuesday is a, Sweden Tuesday is a Sweden away on Tuesday now is a re- really interested to transfer that philosophy. Now, in fairness, in Toulon they were, mm. you know, they they did well against good teams. But in there was a clear sense that no matter what they did, they were told hold on to possession of the ball. Every single <coughs> player, pretty much every time, chose the right option. And I mentioned to Neil earlier, like John Giles would have always said about O'Neill and Keane that it's not a case of they're being told to do it; they're being not told not to do it so that when they're giving the ball away they weren't being told listen you need to do the right thing here and here you get the sense that Stephen Kenny's bringing them in after the match and he'd be pretty, pretty angry if they weren't and doing that includes exactly the, what he wanted it's, it's interesting to contrast with them um, like I'm a massive fan of Duffy but the two centre backs that were playing last night they play a fairly aggressive game they are mm. touch tight and they, they play pretty high up the pitch but they also want to be on the ball they actually, like, Masterson is well able to pass the ball. Um, and uh, I think Leo Connor has the potential to be a proper, proper right back for mm. Ireland, if not in the centre. I mean, if Seamus Coleman... Seamus Coleman might struggle to be in Kenny's first team by the time he'll be 32 at that stage. Nah. Might do. No. 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 Not, not him. Kenny's in charge. Uh, all going to plan. Kenny's in charge this time next year. So no. He could well play Doherty ahead of him. <laughs> yeah, but Coleman will still be no. very much in Leo, the squad. In any event, Leo Connor. Oh no, he'd be in the squad, but Leo Connor looks like a player of this. Leo Connor has to get in the set. I, I mean, I think we just need to. like. 
you know... Leo Connor needs to play a full season for Celtic, like, and even then, yeah, it's mm. Celtic. So some of these lads still need to be able to show that they can, they can translate that to you know, when you're playing against, you know, guys who are bigger, maybe stronger than you, and you, you, you maintain that same commitment. Underage football is still underage football. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, like Jason Malumbi, I think, I think he's one now who's actually had a bit of an injury-interrupted campaign. He's gone to Millwall on loan in the Championship this season. He, he's only started the Cup games. He, he's come off the bench, I think, in the most recent league one. That's a fascinating one for me because mm. he's got some great attributes. He wants to get in the ball. He's boxed That's the ball. That's the point. He wants a to bit, get in the a ball. Bit, a bit of it, like, yeah, but it's also easier to get... I mean, like, yeah. if, if, Ar- if Ireland 21, if like if Jeff Hendrick and Conor Herren and, and They'd want to get if in they the were ball. playing against Armenia last night, they would have gotten the ball. He seems to have really so, leadership qualities though. The no, he's got... He's won, but, like, but 46 it. games at Millwall or whatever, however many games he gets to play, yeah. that's what he needs to do before he's in uh, a senior team I think with the creative attacking players you can take more of a risk but in the other positions it's slightly different yeah because for everything we're saying Gary that is the one big concern I guess for Stephen Kenny that yeah he can try and put down his philosophy over the next year that when he takes that Ireland job in a year's time nine of those players may not have played a game of senior football for their club listen when he does become manager he's got to make Ireland competitive and it's all well and good about this philosophy and I want to play the game this way, that way. If you ain't got the players who can do it, it's very difficult. You've got to find solutions. You've got to be a problem solver and make your team competitive. <laughs> Listen, you're talking about philosophies all the time and it, I just, I don't know, I just, I'm listening to, there's a long way to go for both that manager and those young players. Absolutely. And if anyone has this notion that Mick McCarthy is, you know, an old style of football and Kenny is the future. Mick McCarthy has, is you know, take out the two Gibraltar games and we have six meaningful games in this group. That's all he's judged by and does, he has no chance to change our system or our philosophy within little tweaks here or there where Kenny has the Nations League and he has the under-21s. Mick, Mick isn't a dinosaur at all. He just has very little chance to actually do anything. How, and we're getting way ahead, how pragmatic do you think Stephen Kenny is going to be in his first game in charge of the senior team. Do you think that under-21 performance last night is what the Irish senior team will be trying to reflect in his first game, no matter what the opposition? I, I, I think we're getting, we are probably getting a bit far ahead. And as Gary Just sa- a touch. Yeah, like I think as, as Gary says, like he needs to be competitive. I mean, I think that's part of the debate here, actually, because I, the logic behind this type of appointment is to maybe try and get out of the cycle of like we and it's there's very financial reasons mm. it's what we do we need to qualify for tournaments and, and I mean we know what the FEI's financial situation is that we need to qualify for competitions and so we do need to just rely on a certain degree of spirit and stuff like that what we've never well, what we've never done, and which is what other nations have done, is almost write off a campaign. We, we, we've never written off a campaign, and someone can correct me, that every campaign, like we've gone for a big appointment or we're trying to get this previous manager, we'll stay on for one more campaign because he's getting the results. Like we've always had a results because we need to qualify for the next tournament. If we're going to commit to the Kenny um, idea, I guess, then we have to be prepared to say, well, actually, if if he tries something different, and if he does try something different, and he does maybe favour some of the younger players, and maybe favours a different type of, I don't know, maybe leans more heavily towards the creative type players. Uh, but you have to be prepared then to stick with that if there is a couple of defeats, if there's a mm. couple of losses, that, and not then suddenly go, well, oh, he's got one win and five or whatever it might be and we're out of the running for this, this competition. If you believe in this plan, then, then there has to be patience to go with it. Like if, you're, if you think that Kenny's going to come in and, and qualify Ireland for the next tournament and straight away, that's just not feasible. But then you can't also say, like, abandon that strategy after a couple of games either. So, that does sound like the type of thing we would do, though. Oh, of course it does. <laughs> I know you know it's going to happen. You know, you know, after three or four games, like a Stephen Kenny team can get bad results, and regardless of the reasons for them losing those games or whatever it might be, to be element of, I'm not sure the players are having him. Oh, yeah. he's never played. Like that will happen in the same way that Mick can, can be labelled as as one thing. He's labelled as a dinosaur in one way, and and it may be out of his control what has happened in games. Kenny, after a couple of results, you know there will be people that will be saying <laughs> that will be making that point does, and um, the, players, the players aren't responding to it that will ele- be said there's an elephant in the room that is the FAI as well like who, I don't know what situation what state the FAI is going to be in a year's time you know will they have if Kenny is under pressure will they have any you know balls to do something about it um, I think Kenny do a great job but Dan Dan makes a good point he's caught between a rock and a hard place
place of his um, philosophy and his will to play football, but a pragmatism in that we have a certain bunch of players, we have senior players, we have players coming through, but we, we probably do kind yeah. of need to qualify for and, a tournament. And I think it's as well. important as well for people who maybe haven't seen a huge amount of, of, of Kenny's teams. Like you want them to play good football, but talk to you people. To win. People in the League of Ireland who will be listening to this to be laughing. Like <laughs> Stephen Kenny's and Dog team were uh, are like incredibly like streetwise, they can be cynical when needs be. Like, you know, I think people who have who watch no League of Ireland and they hear and they probably even Gary's probably hearing us talking about Kenny this philosophy and thinking that like it's some the mad I- idealist who's like he wants his team to be attacking and so on, but like his teams have had a an edge to it too as well. So like yeah. I think we have to sort of measure our uh, measure our expectations going both ways. And he has this. Keith Andrews who'll be a big help in terms of easing him in there, I think. Oh will he? I would hope. These are the big questions that will be answered. Well, he'll have Robbie Keane, won't he? Because he's got a contract. Well, that's that's the other. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen anyway. That well, would be he has a contract. Yeah. So therefore, that's as something I say, for the FBI to. I think we're going to hear a lot about this. Over that that, that next like year. Th- that's something I. I There's one thing I find with Johnny. He cannot get the tone of a presenter when he's trying to wrap it up ads. to go to an ad ads. break. Who cares about ads? <laughs> yeah. Go no. to ads right now. Go to ads. <laughs> Off the ball on News Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. With Jess Kelly. This week's show is coming to you from Minneapolis with thanks to Erlingus. We'll hear from the medical director at Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine about how technology is transforming how they treat patients. Plus, Irish American company Voice Hive will explain how the love of pub quizzes led to a tech business. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. With Jess Kelly. Download the podcast now or tune in this evening at five. On News Talk. Exciting afternoons with Harvey Norman. Bring the cinema home with an ultra high definition smart TV and surround sound from Harvey Norman. The cinema experience with no cues and no trailers. The Aer Lingus September sale is now on. This year, put hibernation to bed and wake up to winter with great value flights. Book North America from 159 euro each way as part of a return trip and swap duvet days for winter getaways. Don't snooze through the season. Wake up to winter. Smart books now in the September sale. Smart flies Aer Lingus. Book now at aerlingus.com. Offer subject to conditions and availability. Look, here's Mummy come to bring you home. Sorry I'm late. How's it being back at work? It's different. Can be tough after maternity. No, I mean the job is different. (laughs) Totally different. I was in charge of client services. Now I'm in new business, and my deputy is now my boss. You need to talk to someone. I did. They just said my role changed while I was away. No, you need to talk to someone else. There are times in life when you need someone you can trust, in your corner, working for you. These are the times to talk to your solicitor. From the Law Society of Ireland. Hi, I'm PJ from PH Ross. What does design mean to me? Imagine being handed a box of crayons and being told you can only use one colour. Design for me is being able to use every colour in the box and tell a story from the mirrors to the taps to the floor. At PH Ross, whether your bathroom needs refreshing or a total renovation, our staff are here to assist. From concept to completion, PJ and our team are here every step of the way. Our teams strive to create a personalised experience. Discover the bathroom you've always dreamed of, or the bathroom you'd love to dream in. Visit our showroom at BH Ross on the Old Cabra Road and let's begin. Free now. Get all the ducks in a row for your business. Synergising solutions into actionable actions in a blue sky thinking environment. We'll cross pollinate B2B. Okay, right. We're leaving the business up to them. Search Free Now Business to open a business account today. Paying us. The Sport Ireland Campus Blanchard's Town is the home of Irish sport. Not just for our athletes, but for you in the community. Check out our amazing offers for families with kids camps, sport academies and birthday parties. Or for adults, why not join our gym with a 50 metre pool or your club school, friends can book one of our world-class indoor or outdoor facilities, including our athletics track, soccer, basketball or badminton courts and many more. Check us out on sportirelandcampus.ie The 2019 Boyle Sports World Grand Prix Darts is back at the City West Convention Centre Dublin from the 6th to the 12th of October. See 32 of the biggest darting stars on the planet, including world number one Michael Van Gerwen, former Grand Prix champion Daryl Gurney, plus fan favourite Peter Wright. Get your tickets now at Ticketmaster.ie and search darts. The 2019 Boyle Sports World Grand Prix Darts at City West. Game on. 
To celebrate the Rugby World Cup, Air's broadband sale kicks off now. With totally unlimited fibre broadband, plus you get the Air Sport Pack free. The home of the Rugby World Cup in Ireland. And it's on sale for an incredible $29.99 a month for six months. Call 1-800-500-300, go in store or visit air.ie. Air. Let's make possible. New customers only, $59.99 a month thereafter. 12-month contract, subject to availability. Air Sport Pack channels subject to change. Use of experience may vary. For full details and terms, see air.ie. On September 17th, the Aviva Stadium plays host to the 1-0 Sports Business Conference. Experience the off-the-field future of the sports industry with the NFL, Microsoft, Nike and Formula One. Four stages, 40 international speakers, world-leading brands. Tickets are available at 1-0.com. Airgrid manages and develops the national electricity grid. You could say it's the heartbeat of Ireland, keeping our country's energy flowing from head to toe across the land, so that everyone has power when and where they need it. Because no matter who your electricity supplier is, it's the power of the grid that keeps our farms and businesses running and our homes warm and bright. Now and into the future, without missing a beat, Airgrid, the current, the future. Last month, the Costigan saved €306 Euro at Lidl. Their shop last week included our Irish chicken breast fillet family pack. One kilo for eight forty nine. dollars Save money like the Costigans and save time by getting your shopping delivered with the Buy Me app. That's B-U-I-M-I-E. Start your big save at Lidl.ie. Lidl, more for you. The Costigan shop between July 22nd and August 12th and received a gratuity for participation. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Word coming from the Aviva is that Keith Earl seems to be okay. Joe Schmidt says he could probably have played on. It's a quad injury that forced him off, so maybe Ireland have come through that 19-10 win over Wales with a clean bill of health ahead of the World Cup, which starts in just under a fortnight. Our football coverage brought to you with thanks to Paddy Power for information on responsible gambling. Visit dunlouis.net. Offtheball.com, by the way, the best place to keep up to date with all the reaction and analysis from Ireland's win. And, of course, if you do want to watch back that roadshow from Wednesday night, Johnny, which a lot of people have watched. More people than watch your show on Wednesday night, I think you'll find. It was it did very well. I'm just well, saying. Though. I'm just saying. More um, people have watched that. I so listen, you see what you can do I, next time you come I, in. I haven't watched it because I just I'm looking forward, not back. <laughs> <laughs> we have a text in. Is anyone worried about how many of our promising youngsters are going to Celtic? Scottish League is a major step down. Gary, any thoughts on that? Um no, nah, listen, in terms of trying to find first in football, I, that's what I would encourage all those young players to do, whether or not it's up in Scotland. Um, as long as they were getting games, the frustration is that when they're not. I'm not so sure that these lads are going to play, though. That's, that's the, I mean, Celtic actually... Is there some sort of a change in recruitment yeah, policy or there something in Celtic? There looks, to be, there looks to be some kind of change, because it's not just Irish lads as well. I mean, on, on Wednesday, or whenever the transfer deadline was, say Monday, I think it was, they signed Leo Connor. They also, on a four-year deal mm. from, from, from Man United, an academy player, they signed Jeremy Fringpong from Manchester City, a Dutch uh, guy who can also play at right full, but not a versatile player, on a four-year contract. Um, they signed the guy from Kilmarnock, Greg Taylor, left back on a four-year deal. Deal. And like Afalabi on a three year deal, Luca Connell on a long term deal. So just trying to protect like, their value they're, they're, in the, one signing, of these works out. Yeah, they're, signing a, lot of, the one they're signing a lot of young players on long term contracts. But like Luca Connell was signed, was put in the Champions League squad, but hasn't been mapped since. He's gone into the development squad. Now, I know Damien Duff is there, um, but I'm not, I don't think it's a, like a greening of, of, of Celtic in some respects. It's, it must be a recruitment thing that, that we're going to look at this type of these guys who maybe are just on the fringes of the, the, the big clubs. You know, it's not a pre Brexit this strategy that somehow on October 31st everything breaks down in Britain there's a Scottish independence referendum a month later and suddenly they have all these players you should have asked Roy Keane that the other night that <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see Neil Lennon go in a press conference well actually this is what our plan is <laughs> this is our free, free Brexit plan <laughs> and Neil Lennon then makes a break for Scottish independence exactly um, that would have made and they aligned the themselves problem. separately Scotland and Ireland where all of a sudden they have these players who are free to play. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Celtic fans were very unhappy that they signed quite a few players in the summer who then didn't play in their European games. You know, so they're, they're sort of, they have this model of maybe recruiting cheaply with a view to hopefully hitting the jackpot, as you say. So in terms of their development, like I don't know what assurances that they've been given. Like I mean a four year contract is a nice contract to get, like for a second professional contract for any pro. Like the second contract is often the toughest one. So like Afal Abbey was released by Southampton mm. and has got a three year deal, which is very unusual for a guy who's been released to get a three year at his next club. So um 
whether they're going to get the games, I think it's it's, it's, the, it's, it's important debatable. they're playing like because a lot of those twenty ones aren't getting regular football. It's just important like the SPL isn't a bad standard if they're playing week in week out. Um, you know against like the Harps, Hibs, Rangers in particular. At least they're developing as players and they're playing men's football. Role. Well, well, what's yeah. interesting is that you look at that twenty ones last night. I know my time might be tight on a small bit, but like you got the two centre halves that you mentioned, like Conor Masterson, Liverpool. You know, star of his generation, and the flip side his partner is Dara O'Shea, who went on loan from West Brom to Exeter last year and played over 40 games mm. apparently very mm-hmm. well and actually you can see it in him now look sharper you can of. see it yeah you can 100% when he's played he's played men's football and so that's that's well, the likes of O'Connor and Afalabi and these players that I'd rather see them playing now than necessarily being a, a big club you Gary, see that with John Egan, don't you? In terms 100%. of going down the leagues yeah. and getting his games, and suddenly at 26, we think of him as a young centre half as such, but goes down to Gillingham, League One team of the year, learns how he's trade, and then gets back to the top that way. It's a good pathway. I did actually want to bring up John Egan because Ireland are playing Bulgaria in a friendly on Tuesday night, and presumably the likes of John Egan, Alan Judge, Alan Brown might get a bit more of a run out. From your memories of friendlies under Mick McCarthy, how much stock do you think he will place in this game? And is there an opportunity for some of those players that they can actually do enough against Bulgaria that they can force their way into the team for the match against Georgia? We haven't played for Mick for the national team. He puts a lot of stock on on those who who are even training. You can actually force your way in there if you impress him in training. But in terms of having a match situation to do, it's brilliant. It's an opportunity for those guys to say, listen, I'm ready. Give me a chance as such. But it'd be interesting to see. I know that he's used Alan Judge really well. It's great to see him getting over his injury problems. And he was vital for that, obviously, the, the, the great delivery for the goal in Denmark. But that recovery run to stop a certain goal amazing. from the other night mm, was amazing. brilliant. Listen, Seamus Coleman done the same thing. And it's that type of movement that if you don't do those first four or five yards and you're alert, you'll never make up the ground. And I hope that he gets a start now and shows his quality. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? I'd like to see Brown, Alan Brown, who actually hasn't started the team at Preston. He hasn't started the season in the team at Preston. I don't know that he have a bit of an interrupted pre-season or what happened because, like he, you know, he was he gone to double figures last year in terms of goals, and he is someone that at Preston actually plays as a number ten. But the way to Preston play, he's actually yeah. almost a defending from the front <laughs> number ten. You know, he he's aggressive. He sets the tone. So he, injury has prevented him from really being around. That's sort of what uh, an uh, Irish number ten yeah, would always have to be as well. One hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. So it's. He he's missed like injuries have interrupted his mm. progress with Mick, and I think he's someone that Mick would like. I think it's even significant he brought him on when he did the other night. Mick he, likes him. Yeah, yeah, he does. He yeah. Well, I mean, it, yeah, wouldn't, su- it wouldn't surprise me that he does. I think he's someone that like you talk even about that energy in midfield, and we're talking about that maybe some of those attributes and someone being able to break forward. I think he's someone. I think Mick. I, I did hear that Mick quite liked Odada, but hasn't been able to really. I think his club situation has affected him. So they'd be two for me, Brown and Odada. I'd love to see them. Get it, and Egan as well, I suppose. But like Brown, no doubt, in terms of forcing, I don't think I don't think Mick's going to change his back four no matter what, really. But maybe with Brown and uh, Odada, they could put themselves in the picture. A cap for Jack Byrne? Yeah, purely from a selfish perspective, I think Jack will get game time on uh, Tuesday. I hope he comes in and shows what he's capable of. Um, whether I think the players Dan mentioned are more relevant in the longer term, but um, I think Jack has done enough, and um, I'd be fascinated to see who he gets on because his, his club form has been uh, absolutely immense. And um, Shamrock Crovers missed him last night. Nice, even against Galway United. That would have been a bit of a talking point, I'd imagine, if Shamrock Rovers ended up getting beaten by Galway <laughs> United. Like, honestly, honestly, like they, um, they... Especially if Jack wasn't in the squad. That's what I mean. You know, on, that on he, he, he wasn't even in the 23. But like, if, just like, we're talking about this, like if Watford are playing Dundalk Monday night, like can El Buzetti play? No. Like that's... That, that's but he's ab- in Sweden. It's yeah. a bit different. That, like, but that's an absolute nonsense. Like that's a massive game for you Watford. You need two players to be able yeah. to postpone yeah. a game. Like El, Bu- El Buzetti is, um, he, 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 I think he came off the bench last night, but he's, he did, he's not starting for him at the moment. And Watford are playing Dundalk in a game that could be huge for the club's future and their best player is not there. I mean, it, we shouldn't be letting this um, crap go on in this country. But that's, uh, it's a bit of a tangential point, but it's a valid point. I mean, it is. It's, that's, that's something that we need to adjust. It's we, we can always accept, Dan, it's a tangential point. <laughs> yeah. I like when it's also a valid point, though. <laughs> yeah, well, so, you know, one out of two ain't bad sometimes, to be fair, but this, in this case, we had two. The time doesn't like that at all. Wow. Well, oh. no, um, <laughs> um, look, I'm... He's just gone off. He's just he's, he's trailed off. Something else has happened on I, his yeah. phone. I, I would love to see Odawa playing, though, and given proper game time, see what he's like, because Robinson is not the answer on the wing going on. Gary, on, do you on, think... On, I can't say Robinson. Robinson was carrying an injury. He was carrying an injury as well, though. We have 90 seconds left. 90 second warning, Johnny. That means the show is going to finish in 90 seconds. Gary, in that, do you think that Alan Judge is now ahead of Callum O'Dowda in terms of backup even to Callum Robinson? 
Well, I think the very fact that Mick says and puts a lot of stock, which is, can be a bit contradictory in terms of who's playing regular football. There's certain lads who weren't who were getting their nod, but Alan Judge does look like he's um, a player who's certainly at the front of Mick's thoughts, yeah. All right, Gary, great stuff. We'll talk to you again over the next couple of Saturdays. Uh, Thanks, lads. Lots more to come in off the ball tomorrow from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock. We'll be talking more football. Damien Delaney is going to be long. Ron Nogara reflecting on the weekend's rugby. We'll have Philip Lanigan and Peter O'Reilly on the Sunday pay-per-view. Neve Mulcahy and more Trassini Callagher at Crow Park for the All-Ireland Camogie Finals. And Joe and Neil will be in studio for the afternoon as well. Dan, thank you. Thank you. You all right, Johnny? All good, Nathan. Great show Wednesday, by the way. Really enjoyed it. Listen back. <laughs> and I met, a, I met Nathan's back. dad as well. A great man. There you go. I'd never met Michal, him before. Michal, he did. Gentleman. Yeah. He was at, in Terryland Park last night. It was night. nice to talk to someone who's very much on top of football <laughs> developments in uh, the Galway region. Boom. On that note, good luck. Give him a ball and he had a grass. I'll give you a move for the perfect pass. Give him a ball and he had a spice He'll give you a move with gut